All right, we are live. So thank you guys for letting me host this little game for you. Um, I have not played with any of you. I've seen your names around a lot, but in any case, my name is Morgan. Um, Chris wanted me to hop in here and see if I could run a game. So here I am, lucky for you wonderful fellas. Um, if you don't mind just quickly introducing yourself just so I can get names and everything right, then I'll kind of go into the swing of things and we'll get this rolling. Um, so whoever wants to go first and be the guinea pig can go for it. I'll go first. All uh, right. My name's Thomas. I run a character named Akira. Uh, Swap Buckling Rogue, level seven. Seven. Gotcha. Hello, my name is Matthew. I play Sienna Renwood, the level seven wizard, and also do the voice for her level familiar rig. <laughs> seven. And Ian, I um, my name's Ian. Uh, I play Mesrick the Mage. He's been in me and Zaru for uh, a while, a while now. Just trying to um, help those that are trying to put an end to the deafness. Right. Sweet. All right. So the title of this one is Strange Sightings, and I believe Mesrick, you're the one who brought this up. Apparently saw a, or heard rumors of a flying ship that crashed somewhere down to the southwest. That's right. Absolutely. All right. Grabbed this little group together and headed on out. So we're going to fast forward a few days here as you guys are moving through the jungle. Down towards the approximation of where you would expect things to be kind of located. Um, Mesrick, what is your best stat? Uh, my best stat. Yep. Um, his, his best stat is um, intelligence. All right. Give me an intelligence check, please. He gets a seventeen. All right. So we're about four days into the journey. Tell me some sort of obstacle, encounter, a situation that occurs that you find yourself having to think your way through, and you help the party, you know, overcome this obstacle. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, along the way, he's um, we found ourselves uh, quite lost. Actually, there were, there's been a bit of a turnaround. There was a, a herd of um, dinosaurs that we tried to avoid, and in doing so, we got totally just turned around in this like totally heated uh, jungle. And um, so he's taken uh, the map out when we've been able to find a, a more quiet um, uh, place. And um, he's uh, just like checking, checking this this ratty map, and and also conferring with um uh, his two colleagues, with um just the direction of uh, getting us back on course. Nice. So yeah, it t takes a little while. He probably lose a, a day or so, kind of trying to get things figured out and able to get back on this main path. Maybe follow an old raptor trail or something. Get the clearing through a little bit. Find that you've had to go through a lot of thick and thickness of this jungle, more so than you would have you know, expected to in the beginning. But ultimately, in the end, you're able to get back on track with only a little time lost behind you. And with that, uh, let's see, Sienna, what's your best stat? Also intelligence. Awesome. What's your second best stat? Dexterity. Give me a dexterity roll. 21. All right. So same sort of thing. You know, after a couple more days on this journey, you're about a day off from where you're supposed to be meeting a small tribe of halflings that are supposed to you know, kind of get you the rest of the way. But again, some sort of obstacle encounter, something that you ended up having to use your dexterity either to help somebody else or yourself that come across. Oh, tell us about it. We're having to cross this large fallen log over a small river. And as we're locking along, Meserak is behind her as Sienna is riding on her giant lizard. And part of the tree cracks, gives way, and Sienna is able to quickly slide off the lizard and grab Meserak's arm before he could tumble into the river. Nice. 
So it seems like you might owe him your life there, Meserek. But yeah, again, you guys get back on the path, get across this chasm, this river, this log is, get things going. About seven days total, you guys travel, and you finally meet up with a small little tribal group of half um, from maybe someplace back in town or your base camp. You've heard about the names and different people, but you're looking for one called the Perrin Green Bottle. As you come into this clearing, you found on this map that you have Meserek um, up ahead. You can see the clearing open up a little bit. It's still a fairly thick jungle here, but it opens up just enough, and you can see what looks like these sort of small tents cropped up out of the ground, made by large palm leaves and tied together with different uh, bits of pieces of vine and these weird purplish flowers sprouting from them. And they're all located in a circle, about 12 of them in total. Inside of all of this, you see all these halflings. Most of them are wearing just basic uh, tribal-like wear, loincloths. Uh, they have some paintings on. Some of them have large piercings through their nose and ears, uh, large tattoos covering their bodies. They look a little bit taller than your normal halfling, probably a little closer to four and a half feet or tall, and they're pretty stocky. Um, as you guys come into the clearing, you see they all sort of look in your direction. It seems like they've been expecting you for a little while now. One of them will stand up. Has a bit of a pot belly on him, a little bit older. Maybe guess, maybe in his 50s or so. Still pretty decent shape, though. And he hurries over, quickly waddles. Hi, he says, hey, you must be the ones that have been coming down here. So we're supposed to meet you. What's your names? Uh, the name's Meserick. Uh, my friend here is uh, uh, Sienna. And the sea elf over here, this is Akira. We, we were supposed to meet uh, Paired on Greenbottom. Is, is, he, is he around? Uh, uh, you're looking at him. The one and only. This handsome as could ever be. Yeah. Look at both of you for a moment. And then his eyes settle on Kira. Oh, ain't seen a beauty like you in years. Trapped in this jungle shithole. What brings you here, CF? Helping my my fellow comrades here search out uh, answers. And what answers have you found? Are they to your liking? Kind of struts his stuff a little bit, obviously implying himself, but. Uh, you do know my character is a male, right? <laughs> oh, no, but I do now. <laughs> okay. See, Anna's the girl in the group. Yeah, but anyway, uh, no, no honest answer ever comes with satisfactory uh, reasoning. Hmm. Well, that didn't go as planned. So anyway, anyway, come have some bit of food to eat, and uh, perhaps you can. Tell us a story, and in payment, we'll tell you what we know about the Flying House. I believe that's why you're here, right? Indeed, yes. indeed. And I believe we're quite famished, he says. That's See, and I will lean over, and I kind of lean down off the saddle, petting her raptor, and then patting the giant. just like, yes, because my babies here are famished. And, well, they do love... They do like to eat, so you might want to feed them before they decide what they want to eat. Ah, uh, don't you worry. We got a bit of Gorilana soup and a little fur stew. Not the greatest, but it'll fill your tummies and keep you warm. Come, come. You want to waddle back over. You can see the halflings. In total, there's seven of them that are sitting around this little... Uh, it sort of looks like coals now. There's not much of an actual flame going. But there is definitely a small wooden pot. Or, yeah, I'm sorry, a uh, metal pot sitting on top of these wooden coals that are glowing red hot. And you can see it steaming out of there. It smells absolutely horrible, but it's food. They quickly ladle up a couple bowls and hand them out to you. Um, you can see it's later evening. Uh, the sun's starting to set on the horizon. It says, uh, So... 
how about you tell us a tale? And then we will tell you what we know about this flying house. I have a few people who have scouted out position. And we have no use for uh, what you call monies and trades. But we just like stories. Who wants okay, to tell uh, a story? Yeah, Kira would take point. Do I have to roll, like, a perception check or anything? No. no. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you the story yeah. of her. Last Sienna will lean over. Um, no, she's like, I know it's the perfect thing. Tell them about the frogs. Ah, the frog yes, the frogs. Created. I forgot about the frogs. Okay, so... <clears throat> set back. We was on this expedition to go get these golden leaps. They help uh, cure the sick and help prevent death curse in some way. I really don't know much about it. My Isaac were friends might be able to tell you more if you like. But that was our quest. During our expedition, we ran into these uh, these frog people. And kind of accidentally surrendered herself because we didn't speak their language. So anyway, they take us to their village and come to find out that uh, we surrendered ourselves to the high priest. And his mission was the king wanted him to bring back their goddess. And the priest didn't know how to do it. So he was facing death himself to figure out how to do it. So the four of us that was there we conjured this amazing tale. <clears throat> like I threw the most beautiful frog goddess princess you ever seen. My magical friend... With his crowns made him come to life with the magic paint we had. <coughs> we made her magic friend over here. Sienna made her levitate in the air and brought forth some kind of magical amulet is what he said. And it was just the most amazing wedding you ever seen. It's nothing like a good wedding. Even between frogs and such. That's, that's, that's fascinating. What do you think yeah, of the soup? Can. And even as he says that, because um, Meserek took a, like a, one of these bowls that were kind of given, and the whole time he's been, he's almost been like playing with his food almost. He hasn't, he, he hasn't taken a bite. Um, he has good berries, and along the way, he shared that with his um, his companions. That's really kind of sustained them, so they haven't really um, used their rations so much. But he's he's been playing with his food, and um, even as Akira tells his story, he's like really watching, not not just the um, the pot-bellied 50-year-old uh, Piram Greenbottom, but just the rest of the um, uh, the halflings that are that are around, especially those that are on the periphery, just just taking in his surroundings. He says, "Ah, uh, uh, I have a I have a story." He says, "I've been." I'm not so good with stories. This is uh, uh, there, there once was uh, how does it go? There, there was, was there once was um, uh, a, a farmer, I believe, and he had uh, two children, and uh, he wanted to do uh, uh, something done. I believe uh, some some cleaning it was, for instance. And he he said to his two children, he said, uh, 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 "You here, come. You are my friend. Come forward." He said, "You." Uh, uh, go clean, <clears throat> and the first son was was he was arrogant, and he was ah oh, of course, Papa, yes, yes, of course I'll do this for you, and he went off and he didn't didn't clean anything, and then he 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 had spoken also to the to the younger son and said, son, go go and do this thing for me, it's important, and his son would curse him, spit out on the floor, and he went away and he, he cleaned his extremely well and uh, that is that is as much of the story as I remember well most stories have a bit more of a, a, a climax but I suppose maybe if, if you think on a rest for the night maybe you can remember it in the morning so I'd like to know what happened with these two young gentlemen that I have two children myself 
You point to his right. You see a small halfling girl, um, probably in her 20s or so. This is, uh, my daughter, Lita. And this, he points to his left. My nephew. Well, I took him in as a son, but he, he's a nephew in truth. But, uh, his name is Ertan Makaka. This is, uh, and the rest of them. He points around, naming off a couple of these other halflings. They'll give you a soft way, but they don't seem to be too interested in what's going on with you. They have a small little group that seems to be playing some sort of game with small marbles and dice. But they'll you know, give you a warm welcome handshake or hello or whatever the case might be before they go back to their things. He says, uh, while you're out, perhaps you can do me a bit of a favor as well. He says, I have another daughter. We call her Makaka T. She's what uh, you might call a princess. He says, uh, our tribe is much bigger than this, uh, further to the east, but Makaka recently has went missing. He says, that is why our camp is here. We've been on a search now for roughly three days. We were told to wait for your arrival before Heading out further. He says, if you find her, perhaps you can bring her back. Young girl, 23, bright red hair. You recognize her for. She has a strange deformity and a third eye sort of off to the left of her left eye here. It's just a pale white orb, an unfortunate birth defect. We believe it was a curse, but perhaps it was a prophecy. But that's neither here nor there. He says, uh, you come for, for, for the flying house. He says, uh, he says, well, I'm assuming you'll stay the night here. It's getting a bit late, but uh, I, I'm happy to share what I know, if, if that works for you. Oh, of course, of course, you and he looks towards Lida and um, his nephew, Elton, and says, uh, we have fine children here. Of course, if we find her, the daughter, Mak Makakati, we will uh, bring her home. But uh, w where did she last go missing? Says, well, it was a 10 day ago. We were tracking a small pack of Gorilan here through the forest. Large ape like creatures, velvety fern, forearms. They make excellent stew, as you can taste. This is, uh, all of us are hunters. Uh, she's uh, what you would call ambitious. Not the type I would send out on such a mission, but she wants to learn to hunt. And as a father, it's a good, a good skill for her to have. You, you never know when the case might be. So we brought her along. And when. So the first night went well, the second and the third. When we woke up on the fourth morning before heading back, she was gone, her tent torn to shreds. And it was the strangest thing. It was covered in, uh, like, uh, we believe what you would call frost. Cold water, frozen hard, just covered the entire tent area. Uh, I've never seen such a thing here. Even in this swampy, hot heat, it wouldn't melt. It just laid there taunting us. We, we quickly moved from the area. Uh, perhaps you might pass through the same on your journey in the morning. So, uh, but I, I, we couldn't bring ourselves to stay right within that area. Sienna will lean over to Meserak to kind of whisper in his ear, like, this is the second time now we've encountered ice in this jungle. It's a bad sign. Yes, yes. Um, not wanting to be, um, uh, not wanting to be rude. She, she says, yes, yes. This is, uh, this is strange. There, it has been twice that it has snowed in this, uh, in Chult. And uh, I do not know why, what this means. Where did you 
come across it before. Mm-hmm. Sienna will chime up. Uh, well, when we vanquished, vanquished Nanny Poo Poo, the foul green hag, her place she was dwelling in had been ruined by ice magic. That's strange. It's, 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 it wasn't a large area. He placed one of the nearby little tent structures. They're maybe seven feet by seven feet. They're not very big at all. This is uh, just her hovel. It's, it's, it didn't spread out. It was centered right there where she was. The whole thing just covered in small particles of ice and frozen cold, spread out a sh- little bit, like tendrils, vine edge across the ground, but that was it. It was, I've never seen such a thing in my years. Oh, we will do what we can to help look for it. Do you have any of her belonging, something that would have a strong scent on of it, of, of her on it? Says I... I, I, I Yes, I, I took a few things before we left, and he'll waddle away for a few moments and then come back holding what looks to be just a simple pouch. And we'll walk forward to UCN and hand it over. Inside, you can see what looks to be sort of like a uh, Wiccan doll, but it's made out of hair. Sit, uh, we have a tradition amongst our people. When they get of age to become an adult, their head is shaved. A simple mockery is made of, of their childhood, of what they used to be as they progress into adulthood. This is hers. It's something we keep on us as a good luck charm, I suppose. So, this is hers. This is maybe the closest thing. It's it's made of her hair, and she carried it every day. Let's see, and I will like, let out like a low, low sharp whistle. I have two rock the raptor come up beside her and she'll take the doll out of the bag like hold it for it hold it to him and tell him to like, remember the scent you know, like let him get a good good long sniff of it and then put it back in the bag it says uh, you know it, it, I trust if you find her you'd bring her back he says um if it's any way possible for you to return to that if you don't need it longer or somehow bring it back at some point, that would be excellent. He looks off sort of to the west a little bit. Seems to kind of be st- stuck in thaw for a few. He says, you gotta forgive me. It's It's been a rough few days. It's, Please, please, what is on your mind? He says, well, I'm happy to let you know what we saw of this. He says, uh, a large um, house, it looked like. This is, uh, uh, like. Like the more civilized, not like our own small house. He says, I'm quite well-traveled and have seen some of the larger places in the world. It was like a house, large wooden structure, great big uh, not a sail, but it was like a round uh, bubble at the top of it that seemed to carry it through the air. So when the shadow uh, passed above us, it was it was like a deathly cold that washed over us. It, was, uh, it blocked out the sun, and we all had shivers run up our spine. It, there was something unnatural about it. Young Keep, and he points to a small lad over in the corner. He says, excellent climb. He climbed the tallest tree we could see. He followed it through the sky. He said, it's only a few miles west of here. Maybe a quarter day's march on a good troop. He says, uh, he watched it. The whole thing glowed late in the evening, like... Says, uh, and he reaches over into a small pack and fishes it out. And he brings up this real pale blue, almost a baby blue-colored flower. It looks like a lotus. And he holds up like this, this color. Soft blue. The whole thing was wrapped in this, this bluish color. He said, we watched it beyond 
as it sailed towards the Cobalt Mountains. And the, at, the, at the base of the mountains, it's what we call the Hinta Hills. It says, uh, we lost sight of its lead, lost sight of it uh, as it went down behind the tree line amongst the Hinta Hills. This is, uh, we can give you a simple map in the morning. And it is, like I said, uh, a quarter, you leave early morning at sunrise and you'll be there by early morning mid-morning at the latest so, um, we have no no interest in in what it is the, there was something unnatural and I, I do not dare risk my, my fellow people here but i was told that adventure such as yourself would be coming in search of it wish i could offer more the cobalt mountains you, you say the hinterhills uh, uh, have your people traveled there before are there ever are there things we should know about apart from these the apes, perhaps? Uh, the Gorolans, they they aggressive, but they don't bother people too much. If you if you're gonna head towards the hint of hitters, the most dangerous things you might see are what we call the silent runners. Large, uh, multi-legged, uh, centipedal creatures that their bite will poison you, paralyze you, and they, they steal away with your limbs. Fast, fast. I've never seen anything quicker. Silent, it's, some call them the silent death. Some of them call the quick to ruin. They would be your most dangerous foe. Beyond that, uh, there was once a man he went by the name of Chobe, a uh, mage, uh, I believe, a conjurer of sorts. He also had a place then. Uh, well, it was attacked quite a long time ago, I'd say. I was just a bit of a lad, so long, quite a ways. But uh, when his, his place was attacked, a lot of creatures got loose. There's, there's some strange things walking the Hinta Hills. It's best to let them pass by before continuing on. We've seen large spider-like creatures dripping with ooze. We've saw what could only be described as a Brontosaurus-sized slug. Large tendrils coming off of it in any direction. Strange things. But if anything, the silent runners, you it's the only thing you can do is listen. Says, and even then, it's difficult to hear. Do they fear anything? Any particular elements or such? Are they afraid of fire like most beasts? Says, not that we've come across. Uh, they're quite intelligent. Uh, not like you and I, but for apex sort of predators, they um, said the best we can do is stay still. Says, I've only seen a couple of them in my life and never had to encounter one in combat, he says. But from what I understand, if you do not move, they will not see you. But take that at your own risk. But Mesrick cracks his back so, yes a, a good night's rest would be good he says um uh, do you have a patch of uh, we need uh, just a patch of ground that we could uh, just set up our own place to sleep if that's okay with you he says any place is fine and he points to a few larger tents in the back he says uh, the larger ones are empty you're welcome to stay in those if you wish but to cover for the night since I have several men out working the perimeter, there's nothing to fear here for the night. So we can give you the best rest that we can and uh, offer you a welcome breakfast before you head out. Thank you, thank you. And he looks towards um, uh, Akira and then towards uh, Sienna as he begins to pull himself up on his, on his staff. Sienna will politely decline to offer one of the Ted's saying she she can manage for herself. She has 
something she needs to uh, do. You can see. And then she will, like, find, as everybody starts going off the bed, she'll find a little, nice little clearing spot, and she will cast her tiny hut. And then she will make it completely, like, as loot. What's the wording? As dark as she can, so people can't see into it. With the last sight of her pulling out a tome and started writing in it. Perrin will get up himself. You can see he kind of shoes away these younger kids that were playing with the marbles and stuff, telling them to get off to get some sleep. Assuming you guys don't need anything, he'll check one last time with you before he walks over. There's a larger tree off to the side. You can see almost like a mangrove tree. You can see these huge roots digging down to the ground. And as you watch him head in that direction, he simply disappears right into the tree trunk of this thing. With that, if you guys want to take a long rest, I don't know if you need to do anything. I'm pretty sure you're rested all up. You don't have any issues anyway. But anything else you guys want to do for the night? Yeah, just one last thing. Um, Mesret would do. Would, um, he'd be watching these kids and closer and closer um, coming to them as they, he's watching the game and stuff like this. And um, before heading off the bed, he offers them um, some uh, a few silver pieces. He says, "Ah, uh, uh, these ten that you've been playing with, may, may I have these ten? But, but I'll give you silver, of course, silver, if you wish." They look almost confused by the whole money thing, and one of them will stand up and shakes his head. No, no, no. Not speak well. He, kind of points, he says, uh, and he holds him up to him and says, You can have. We have. And he kind of points over to the side. You can see one of the other kids has some. Seems to be something they all have, but he holds this one towards you. You can see it's small bones. They look like maybe bird bones or something. But there's uh, five of them that are dyed like a reddish color, or painted like a reddish color, and four of them that are green. And then there's six small stones each one is a different kind you can see like a granite and maybe a marble and maybe a obsidian or something but each one's a different kind of stone perfectly marble shaped absolutely he, he, he takes them he, he, he thanks the children and he just says uh, Meserach. thank you thank you and then he um he makes his way first to um uh the tiny hut and if he's not able to uh, get access in there, I don't know if Sienna, you've done it so that we can have access or not. Um, she lets m just Meserak in. Cause she, uh, she, uh, she wants to discuss in private about a few things. Uh, she says, um, as Meserak comes in, he says, uh, but uh, uh, the sea elf Akira. He would not understand what I wanted to bring up with you. He says, ah, a moment, a moment, he says. And then he leaves and uh, he makes his way over to Akira and says, um, if if you wish in uh, perhaps half an hour, in uh, a short while I can I can produce a a comfortable, dry place for you. Um, uh, you may join me in uh, a, a hut of our own if you wish. Yeah, that's fine. And he says, a moment, a moment. And then he, goes, he enters um, uh, Sienna's uh, hut. And she's scribbling away in a large tome journal, and her spell book is to the side as well. And she's like, you still vividly remember our last little incident, do you not? Uh, it depends what you speak of, he says. Uh... <laughs> The Witch Queen. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. How could I forget this? What are you thinking of? And then you see, like, Rig standing on her, her standing on her spell book looking at you with his blood-red eyes. She, she holds up the pair of books to you, displaying... What do you think of this that I've learned from rummaging around through that vault of theirs? Let me see. And he shows. She shows you 
two particular spells. The Animate Dead and Black Tentacles. Ah, interesting. Ah, interesting. And which one do you feel uh, the weave pulls you closer towards? I've taken them both into my book. Wise, wise choice. Wise choice. I've, I've heard of these, but uh, they are beyond my uh, capability to, to pull the strings and create the patterns that uh, make it effective. Good. You don't have a problem with this, do you? Mm. He, he, um, he stretches his beard, he certainly looks at you sidelong. He says, why should I? You are your own person, he says. And he hits you um, like softly against your chest, yeah. He says, you are your own person. I, didn't, I never trusted that witch, but power is power. Stay wise, my friend, as he makes his way to his feet and uh, looks over with a, like a dirty look towards um to, to, towards Rig, and then he smiles at you and says, "Gah, oh man, gah, use me as cat bait." <laughs> and he makes his way out, and um yeah, when he meets up with Akira, he, he kneels onto the floor, takes out his steel plates. And uh, he conjures uh, uh, also a, a tiny hut, and he makes it accessible to uh, Akira himself, Rig, and um, and Sienna, as the as they go inside, and um, uh, and, and, and but basically he just gets ready to. Doesn't leave her little bubble though; it just turns black again as you leave, and like it's a resounding zing goes through of it, like solidifying. Be it for the night. All right. Night goes quite peacefully, more so than you would expect. It seems a little weary, a little strange. Morning comes. Sun isn't quite up yet. For you, all of you hear what sounds like a loud or loud screech outside. You know, whether you look out the windows of your small hut or rush out, you will see this. Old halfling, very, very old um, female. And she's laying sort of crouched down right in front of where all of you were sitting the night before around this little wooden campfire area. And she starts to cough. And then again, she lets out the screech. And it sounds almost like what uh, Sienna, your raptor, would do just this really strange, high pitched screeching sort of sound. It chills all of you right down to your bones. And then she starts coughing, and you see this black liquid sort of pour forth from her mouth. It slowly crawls across the ground, and then she just collapses where she's at with a final ugh. Um, off to the side, Perrin will run out. He just kind of appears out of this large trunk of this tree that he was in, and runs towards her, and you can see he stands above her and crouches down. He has his hand on her back, and he's talking in a language you don't quite understand. Uh, Sienna will, as he goes like, right down, she'll warn him, like, stay back. The ooze. Yeah, look in your direction for a moment. He says, no, no, no. He says, it's... it's a, he says, uh, we call it a curse. Uh, it's a, a family curse. This is... And then he just kind of stares in silence before he says, my mother... This is, uh, just give me a few moments. Um, you look over, Alton, Alton. He waves his son over. He's like, uh, help these young adventurers. Uh, give them a bit of food. I, I will take care of this. And he'll sort of wave his arm behind him, and you see what looks to be this black cloud just appear around him, where his mother is, this little campfire. It's almost like just a black cloud sitting right in the middle of this uh, campsite for a moment. Just drop the darkness spell on top of him. <laughs> Is there any of like the black sludge outside of that that she can see? Um, not yet. From what you can see, it looked like it was kind of crawling across the ground, 
um, not like live, just you know, kind of pooling like blood basically across the ground, but as it came out of the darkness from where you can see now. Um, Meserick um, takes, uh, follows um, the halfling that was uh, taking us to food, takes his bowl of food again, and just um, uh, having the bowl on this part of his hand, he, he just waves his hands as a small incantation as these uh, 10 small berries appear. And he takes one and just like stirs uh, the, his food and just hands one to uh, Akira and hands one to to Sienna and just places the the, the remaining um, seven in his um, in, inside his pouch as he just sort of like sits down and just you know just sort of plays with food and just watches. I'm going to sit down by you. Stares in silence as well, sort of watching. And you can see his eyes are sort of resting on you, Mesrick, for a moment. It happens to all of us when we get old. My great grandmother, great grandfather. Last week, my grandfather himself, my nana's husband, and now her. So it's, a, it's a horrible for me to die. I watched all of them wake up and just begin vomiting like this. This strange, putrid sludge. It's, it's, it's like a virus. And he sort of stuck, touches his stomach. He says, I've made it my life to figure out what this is. Who has cursed you? Who has put this upon you and your family? My grandfather told me a story once. He, says, uh, he was what you would call a, a founder of this group, this tribe. He, says, uh, he bartered our land, our foods, our gardens or the land itself it wasn't very good but he he bartered himself to an old hag by one uh, don't remember her name says i would have to be back at my main camp to look it up this but it seems in turn for bartering for the wealth of our land and hunting and survival this None of us ever truly reach an age or die of old age or this is a, we don't even die at all. Says you could skewer me right now, I would still live. Who's this hag that uh, your grandfather made a deal with? She known by many names, or just one? Uh, no, he says, uh, my grandfather, he, he called her uh, Takamo Fay. He says, I, or something of sort. He says, uh, I was young, very, very young when he told me the story. And if, if you ask my people, says, uh, they'll just shush you. They, they won't listen to me. They, they say that. I can't, I can't. I can't say those words. I can't say the names. Says, I, but I will find her and kill her myself if that's what it takes. Says, I, I don't wish to burden all of you. You, you have your own journeys and quests. And I, I hope that you can at least uh, fill up on breakfast and wish you the best of luck. He says, maybe hopefully you find my sister and. You have luck in your quest as well. He says, I, I don't wish to burden you. With that, he'll sort of stand up and get ready to walk away. Off to the side, you can still see this black cloud is there. Um, but you don't see, again, anything coming out from it or anything. It's only about, I don't know, maybe 10 feet at most in diameter, so it's not real big either. Um, last thing, M Miserick, um just as he's turning away, Miserick, um uh, as uh, just tries to take in from the moment that he's seen, he first met um, 
this halfling until this moment. And um, he tries to, in anything that he said, he tries to, especially now, just um, mull over in his head using um, using insight. Is there anything that's off that he feels, even like gut feeling or anything like this? Or is it pretty? Um, right type of thing? Go ahead and give me an insight check. It's a Modified um, with the half limbs themselves and stuff, everything seems fairly normal. Everything considered, um, you do get a sense that this young halfling Alton seems extremely scared um, or very uncomfortable around his people and stuff. He, every time he happened to look at him, he's always staying off to the side. He doesn't really interact with any of them. He'll come over and help when required or you know, as needed. But for the most part, he really doesn't have anything to do with all the other halflings, sort of a loner of sorts. Um, outside of that, all the other halflings seem, um, I don't want to say jovial, but they seem to be doing okay for themselves. And they play their games, the younger ones do. And the older ones seem to be going through the motions of preparing the foods or getting things cleaned up or doing as required. Mesorek, um, uh, if it's okay, as he's walking away, um, he, he just puts his bowl down to the side and he puts his hand inside his robe and takes out again his, his like, still like plates and uh, he turns, flips over, not flips over, but just like over to the um, specific page and he begins to, um, he's been spending a little bit of time now and you tell me when I have to stop. But he, he begins to spend a little bit of time now um, uh, creating a ritual. He's just like, Do you want to ask? Yeah. as he pulls the weave. And the first uh, 10 minutes, he does uh, Riri's telepathic bond, making a connection between himself and um, uh, Akira and uh, Sienna. That's the first thing. But he's going to do a couple of other things. It will take like 40 minutes if it's possible. If it's not, it's not any time soon. Um, I mean, as long as they're okay and they're not in any kind of hurry. It's still early morning. The sun would just barely be coming up, so he wouldn't want to travel out dark anyway. Yeah. So, so after the first 10 minutes, and any time you guys want to jump in, just do. But um, after the t first 10 minutes and that, um, the sport is uh, is completed and the link is made, he um, uh, he shares his, um, his insight uh, of Alton. And do you see, do you, do, do you see two... He says um, to uh, Sienna and Akira, and then he again begins to cast uh, 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 water breathing and then phantom state, and I'm done. Um, I guess while he's doing that, Sienna will cast detect detect magic as a ritual. Trying to check up on the the halflings claims, like do any of the halflings blow with magic? Um not offhand. After probably a good fifteen, twenty minutes or so, you'll see this black um, darkness cloud disappear. You'll see parents standing there, and all that's left is what looks to be a pile of ashes where what he claimed was his mother is. This black sort of sludge stuff on the ground seems to have stained the ground almost like oil, but it's hasn't grown or spread out any further than what last you saw it. You do notice that the fire pit area glows with a bit of magic. Looks like possibly evocation. Um, Perrin himself, it looks like he has some sort of um, abjuration magics cast upon him. Um, some shield, uh, something more... You're not able to pick out exactly what spells, but definitely defensive spells that he has cast on himself. And where these ashes are of his mother is just this black glow to it. And we'll immediately see that this is necromantic magic of some sort. And it just it glows really, really heavy. Do any of the other halflings glow with that same like dark glow as well, or just uh, the nope. ashes? You look all around it. Everybody else seems to be pretty much just normal. You'll notice that um, Alton, though younger son who was talking to you briefly is kind of off to the side of his loner. He does have a ring on his finger that's glowing. Um, abjuration magic. But beyond that, no. 
Okay. Would it be possible for me to make, uh, looking at the ashes, make a arcana check, it, like to get a clue f- what kind of necromancy magic might do this? Um, yeah, you can do that totally. Sixteen. Um. Um, you definitely recognize something for a curse related, but you'll also get the sense you're not able to really put your finger on it or confirm it. But it definitely has a hint of um, undeadness or um, raising the dead sort of magic, undead something of in in that vicinity being moved around it, almost as if how with that. You kind of get the sense that whatever Perrin did, his mother, whatever, was probably undead or coming back as undead or something like that, and he basically just destroyed her. I guess telepathically, she'll tell Ian that whatever these things, these people are cursed, and whatever kills them, whatever that is that kills them, brings them back. He burned her corpse so she wouldn't come back. You're muted, Ian. As Mazurk has just finished uh, forming um, this, uh, this like a brown steed with like red fiery uh, hair, um, and he hears you saying this, he uh, telepathically says to uh, uh, Akira, uh, when I'm finished with my spells, perhaps I will speak with Alton and uh, see if uh, uh, why he seems so agitated apart from the rest or perhaps you could my friend but if not you then i i, I will you decide and then he begins to um uh using um his ritual to uh, uh comprehend languages it takes 10 minutes to do that okay. i just realized well you have two people with mounts and one who doesn't <laughs> Would it be fair to say Akira onto the giant lizard as well as me? I figured she could probably it's, fit on there like a horse. It says they're twenty feet. Uh, they're twenty feet long. Sure, totally. Yeah, you can ride on the tail, Kira. Whoosh. All right. Once you know this black cloud leaves, and you notice all this, Perrin will. He doesn't really even look in your guys' direction or too much acknowledge you. He makes this sort of motion with his arms, almost like a prayer, and then just walks away. You can see he's walking towards this large tree and you know, kind of disappears back into that again. It's really quiet around the camp. You can see a few of the kids last night they were playing games. None of those seem to be around. You do see some moving between the tree limbs up above you and stuff, like you're on watch or a perimeter or something. And Alton, over to the side, you can see he takes out a small, looks like a small stone, about the size of his palm. He sort of flips it into his hands a few times, mumbles something to himself, puts it back into his pocket. Takes this deep sort of breath. He'll look one last time towards where this pile of ashes is. and Sort of shakes his head and then look to all of you as he starts to walk towards you. He says, Well, I presume... All of you will be off soon. Yeah. Um, I hope you can perhaps find my sister or at least uh, return word since I feel greatly for her. But since if I can be of any assistance or you have any last questions, perhaps I can at least offer some guidance. Was this Alton? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, uh, says, uh, yes, of course. Uh, this is a. I, I sense that there is an unease with you amongst your your, your own brethren, your own, your own blood here. Why is this? What is it that I miss? This is. Uh, well, as parent told you last night, I'm. I'm, I'm as his nephew. I'm just an adopted son or whatever. It says. My father went off to battle this hag and never returned. 
my mother died, much like you just saw. Says uh, the others, they're they're afraid of me, as if I I'm the curse. They look at me as if this is my fault, as if wherever I go, this 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 curse just spreads. It's as if grown up by myself, I, I help and they allow me to you know, do the things I need, but I was never able to play Takama like the, like the, the others. He points to the kids that were playing those things. I don't get to climb the trees and swing the vines. I, I don't get to battle in the armies and the, the fights, the hunts. Is, I just wander from place to place and help as I'm able. It's, 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 a, it's a lonely life. But it's, it is what it is. Akira, what do you think? Yeah, Mizrak says I'm mentally. I think you muted, Thomas. Yep. Oh, yeah, a legend. I hear you. Maybe that's still what you think of the situation. Oh, no, you're uh, uh, just asking what you, what you thought. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know much to think about it. I mean, are we still going after the boat? Or are we trying to find the hag to help them? Or Sienna will say it. I don't know as much we can do for them now. This is an old and dark magic upon them. I mean, I, I fear even killing the hag would not remove the curse. Perhaps it is not even our power to kill the hag. Do you remember our last encounter? That was not easy. True. Yeah, and as I said, there's no guarantee the, the curse no. could even be lifted with her death. No, see, I believe what they're saying is true, so it might just be best to go with her adventure. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, this one says, uh, sh should we, uh, <coughs> should we ask for, uh, perhaps Alton to accompany us or not? Uh, I mean, the more the matter here, he probably knows the layout of the land, at least. Yeah, mm, thanks for a second, then just kind of looks over his shoulders like, you want to come with us? He'll look at you rather dumbfounded for a few moments. Says, what do you mean, come with you? Says, I can't, I can't leave my, my family, my, my people. We will return, of course. Let's, uh... You can look for your sister while we're out. This is, uh, I'm not much of a fighter or help. I, I've, you haven't trained me like the others. He says, I, I, I don't want to burden you. He says, I can, I'd be but, happy to lead you down the paths. I, I know the area like the back of my hand. He says, but I, I don't know how much help I'd be. Otherwise... What? Mesrek says, uh, as he goes into his um, small backpack and he takes out a torch, he says, uh, can you hold a torch? If you can hold a torch, <coughs> we will pay you handsomely. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can hold a torch. <coughs> says, aren't, aren't you afraid of the, 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 that will sicken the rest of you? I'm sure we'll be fine. A, a gold piece a day, how does that sound to you? That's fair. That's fair. <coughs> he takes out three gold pieces and he says, uh, here, we have a, a head start of three days. He passes it to him. Flips it over in his hands, almost you know, like he's completely thrown off guard by this for a few minutes before he puts it into his pocket. And says, I will do whatever I can to help. He says, uh, this means I can find my sisters or find clues or learn something about my heritage, then 
Yeah, it's more than I can do here. Sienna will smile and she's like, just, yeah, don't worry about the fighting, just stay near Strider. He's nice and big and I'm sure he probably won't eat you. Maybe. Don't stand in front of him. So, no, no. So, so, animals tend to like me. It's one of the few things that wouldn't judge me. So, you're going to have Alton. When I, I'll carry reaching into his bag, grabbing an extra short sword, asking him if he like a weapon just in case. He'll look at that and says, oh, no. he says, I, I, I do have some gear and I have uh, a bit of stuff. He says, I know a little bit uh, with my spear and shield. He says, I, I don't know anything about swords. But, uh, give me just a few moments to get ready and, and I will be out. You know, quickly hurry over to the small little makeshift leaf tent thing. You can hear some rummaging around in there, but he'll come out and he has like this large tortoise shell type armor across the front of his chest and his back. And, um, looks like thick, heavy furs of some sort down to his legs. He has a simple, nothing overly fancy, but a primitive, fairly primitive looking spear. Um, has a nice sharp tip on it though. And again, like another tortoise looking shell type shield. And he kind of flings over his back to hold. Says, I'll keep this hand for the torch and this one for my spear. Says, um, I'm ready to leave this place. Sort of looks over again at these ashes and Everybody who seems to be eyeing all of you at this time. It says, anytime you're ready. Yes, yes. And as Rick climbs on top of um, his steed, he says, looks towards um, uh, Akira and uh, Sienna and says, uh, this steed will only last for a short while, but uh, it's a start, he says. So, <laughs> looking at um, Alton, he says, uh, which direction do we take? Uh, well, are you going to put Alton with your you on your steed, or does he need his own? Can he just, like, sit on Strider's head? Or he, if he doesn't eat him. He could, <laughs> he could bring his own if he's got his own. That's fantastic. Uh, no, oh, he doesn't have one, actually. <laughs> I, I, yeah. think, I think we could fit, like, Strider, uh, fit him on, like, <laughs> top of Strider's head, just, like, sitting there. <laughs> the, the big creature. He'll yeah, eye you for 20 a... foot long. I say he's fit three easily. Yeah, he'll stare at you for a few moments. Assuming you don't give him the reason not to trust your uh, steed, will eat him. He'll climb up and sort of pat the creature on the head the best he can. And he actually sort of seems somewhat comfortable. It doesn't look like he's ever really encountered or interacted with this sort of creature or this large lizard before, but he takes it in stride and climbs up the best. He says, ah. If you'll just uh, direct your mount down the path, uh, I'll point the direction. Sort of just points ahead down through. He says, we got about maybe a short two mile head this way, and then we're going to be moving off to the west. And yeah, by late morning, we should be off to where we saw the, uh, the, flying, the flying house come down. And you know, we'll pull that little doll out one like one more time, like let Turok the Raptor sniff it one last good time, you know, get a good fresh scent into his mind, and then she will start spur the giant lizard on. All right. You'll notice some of the other halflings sort of watch as you leave, but they almost seem glad that you're taking Alton with them. Uh, you can see them whispering to one another and kind of pointing in your direction. Perrin doesn't come out from this uh, tree that he's been in. Some of the other ones, you know, they kind of point in the direction before moving off and doing their own things. And with that, you guys are off. Morning kind of slips by quickly. It's a extremely hot, humid morning. Every now and then you can feel this rain sort of drizzle down between the foliage high above. These screaming, howling monkeys constantly swinging through and creating a racket. Takes you only maybe two or three miles inward before Alton veers you off to the side, sort of off the beaten path. It's going to be a little rough headed through here. It's a bit of a rougher terrain. Uh, your steeds should be just fine, um, but we only have a short while to go. So we'll just follow this way. And he sort of trails off as he's looking into the distance. 
Um, right behind them, Sin, if you're looking up ahead, you can see up ahead several trees have been fallen down to the side. You can see what looked to be these small makeshift tents, much like the Halflings had just before. And as your mount moves towards that direction, you can see what he's staring at. You can see this open bit of clearing that's been opened up, and you can see this makeshift tent still covered in ice off to the side. And even though you can't feel the cold coming off this thing, just looking at it sort of sends that shiver of unnaturalness down your spine. You can see something's not quite right with this. And it's even in the hot, muggy, swampy jungle where you're at, it's just perfect little frozen sort of tent to the side. You know, point in that direction as you're coming up to it. And it's sort of off to the side a little bit. Yeah, um, he says, that was our camp from a few nights before. And you can see her tent still frozen like that. Mesrick says um, mentally, um, telepathically, uh, should we uh, take a short stop and check it over, Akira, or should we just continue on? Uh, I'll say if you believe we can get any answers from it, we could probably check it over, but other than that, we're going to get much more than just looking at it from here. Diana? Have Turok just check to see if there's any scent trails or not? Uh, you see him kind of disappear off into the foliage, scurry around a little bit, and just make your way past a little ways before he comes back. It seems um, that he definitely has picked up a scent. I don't know how he would, you know, relay this to you, whatever the case, but it's definitely further ahead, sort of in the direction that you're going. Should indicate like. I guess he's leading us that way. The um, way we're already going. If either of you that have it want to make Arcana checks, you can. Yes. Just on this little tent thing from where you're at. I mean, it's not too, too far away, so you can still see it pretty clearly. Yes. You want to you you make it? No, because um, uh, what he would, um, he's really actually more focused since um, leaving the camp. Um, on um, Alton, actually, just he, and and any time Alton looks at him, he's he, he sort of smiles like this. But he's just wow. really trying to just study his um, insight wise with just his, how he moves his body and just just a think about him. And so his, most of his focus is on that as well as the direction. Got a, got a what? Eighteen. Eighteen. Nice. Um, only rolled a twelve plus six. <laughs> You get this sort of sense that, well, you know for a fact it's unnatural to begin with. You definitely get the sense that it's something magical, something not necessarily of this world, but of, of deity-type proportions, of something much more powerful than you can really fathom that caused this. Um, even though it's such a small area, the amount of power and the amount of uneasiness you get with you, you can see these sort of weaves and stuff. It's definitely something you wouldn't want to tangle with, whatever it was that did this. Yeah, Mezrak looks over to Sienna. She's just, like gone pale, kind of thinking about this. Mezrak uh, says, uh, uh, does it remind you of... Uh... Where we admit the hag in any way. Yes. Even more concentrated though. We have to keep our eyes open. Um is your watch see I was just like just mentally like whatever did this we don't deal with it. Not now anyway. Mesrick, as you're looking at Alton, you can see, and you're trying to sort of get a read on his motions and how he's acting stuff, extremely agitated. Um, it looks more out of fear, though, and simply just not understanding what it is that happened here. And he gets that sort of that strange sensation that um, Sienna has as well of fear and knowing that something more powerful than he can ex understand is there, but he doesn't have that arcana side of it. It's just plain out fear. 
And he's, you know, he'll look back at you, and he's also sort of a pal when he looks at you. See, and he says, I prefer not to stay too much longer. If, 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 if we could sort of maybe hurry along. He says, I don't like this place at all. She's like, well, okay, I remember my little friend. Anyway, it would seem Turok has picked up at least some bit of a scent. Yeah, you'll see a raptor disappear into the foliage straight ahead. Um, your mount, this large lizard, following behind, and Mesert behind there, down to the steed. And it goes again for a good 45 minutes to an hour in the morning before you start to see these huge tips of the mountains between the bits of foliage. The trees here are starting to thin out a little bit more and a little bit more the further you go. The um, ferns and the foliage and the ground stuff spreading out a little bit more. Sunlight drifts through every now and then. And even the mugginess, it's still quite hot, but that mugginess that seems to dwell in the swamp almost sort of lets loose a little bit. It's a very comforting sort of feeling. At the edge of these mountains, you'll see your raptor. Does your raptor have a name? Yes, it's Turok. Turok. Oh, that's easy to remember. Okay. And my, my steed slowly dissipates as Mesrick just goes down to the floor and he's on foot. He says, uh, either, either we take another 10 minutes, or and perhaps I can fit on there with you. Look, I think we can take another 10 minutes. The last time you rode on Strider, you, yes. like your your back was broken. Yes, yes. Oh, he says, uh, you shouldn't need it. It's maybe 15 minute walk. He says, uh, oh, okay. Says and strains up his back and starts making his way. Move ahead just a little ways as some of the bit more of the foliage clears out. Um, Sandy, you're the first to see this, followed by Kira. Um, being that you're in the back a bit more, Mesrick, you don't notice, but you see everybody sort of stop up ahead. All of you see this large, hairy mass laying on the ground. And as your mount strider moves up a little bit, and you can see Alton points to it. He says, I. I don't recognize the creature. Um, Sienna Kira, why don't you guys give me a perception check? Perception? Should my creatures make one as well, or just us? Um, just you guys. All right. I got an 18. Perception. Where is my perception? Abilities. Let's see. Fifteen. All right, so Kira, as you move up alongside, maybe kind of peer around, pushing see on all the way a little bit here. You see this large hairy thing. You notice it's a very, very large dog at first. And if you look a little bit closer, you can see this bright white, almost, um, almost sort of looks like dreaded hair off this creature. And then you can see the snout and these large canines. You'll recognize it as a winter wolf. Oh shit! What's a what's a winter wolf doing here? It's uh, about the size of a larger horse, but obviously much shaggier, covered in this thick fur. But it lays on the ground. It doesn't look like it's alive, or at least not acting like it is. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. <laughs> okay, so I'll pull out my swords while we're, we're approaching and like tell them like it's a wolf. Mesrek, who's coming up the rear behind the dinosaur, telepathically says, whoa, whoa. What do you see? What do you mean there's a wolf? What do you mean? It's a winter wolf. It's a damn winter wolf. Charles? Well, Kira, Kira wouldn't know a winter wolf or anything, but all I can tell you is a big, white, hairy dog. Well, it's the end of probably put <laughs> two and two together, being from Neverwinter. She's probably heard, at least heard of these things. Nice. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, a quick incantation as um a, a small, almost like portal opens and out flies like a grey, a young grey um owl, and just his eyes almost like rolls back in his head for a moment and sort of just his eyes sort of flutter as um his familiar flies up like like maybe to like 120 and just like just just goes across. He's basically he's like looking. And as he's looking, um Mesrek sees what he sees and hears what he hears. But 
can't see or hear what you know what I'm saying? Um, are you going up on the wolf, Kira? Uh, yeah. Right. So, do how you stealthily? Stealthily? How are my animals stealthily. reacting to this thing? <laughs> you tell me. It's not moving. It's not posing a threat. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. Um, I don't know if your raptor would be interested, but if I mean, whatever the case, and as Kira, as you start to move towards it, you can definitely see that it's dead. Especially kind of okay. when you shift over to the side a little bit, you can see its face. It has no eyes. Completely soak away its okay. lips. You okay. can see the lips and the face all the um where you can actually see the skin isn't covered by all this thick fur is stretched really tight over its bones. And as you come up a little bit closer, you can look at this thing. It looks I mean you sort of look to the side, it doesn't have any wounds that you can see. It doesn't smell, it doesn't rot it. Um it just looks like a completely dried husk of a huge dog. So it basically looks like a old mummy of a dog. Yes. Um, I, is your owl set of sores above Nezrik? Are you just getting a, basically a layout of the area around you? Is there tension? Yeah. It flies around. You can see yourself down below. You can see as Kira approaches this large dog thing. As your owl glances around behind you, is just this huge foliage of the jungle. But up ahead, you see the cobalt mountains rising huge into the air. All the very, the very tips of them, you actually see some snow. One of the few areas here that have it. You can see the uh, Hinta Hills as they spread out at the base of this area. Way far in the, I guess it would sort of be the northwest. Um, you can see what looks to be the ruins of an old keep of some sort or something. And off directly in front of you may be another hour's travel. Perched alongside a part that's past the Hinta Hills and partway up the side of this uh, beginning of the Cobalt Mountains, you see the ship that you've headed out here to see. Um, it's stuck on sort of on the side, capped at a sort of a weird angle. Um, you can see the huge bubbly mast. It looks like a, almost like a Zeppelin balloon, basically. It's completely collapsed across the side of it. And that whole area to ship this large balloon uh, thing, the crags and stuff around it, even though that's still lower down. The whole area is just covered in thick ice and snow. And it's just that area. Everything else around it, you know, goes back to normal. You can see the palms and other foliage and stuff. But where that ship is in a good, I'd say about 30 feet in diameter around it, it's just covered in snow and ice. And I was going to say, and with that, I need a dexterity save from you. <laughs> okay, why well, he does that, coming back to the dog, does this uh, high look like decayed or anything, or would it, like, or a mask, would it be worth taking, like, a chunk of its head off? Um, you go up to this thing, maybe poke it with your sword or something, and it just collapses in on itself. Um, exactly like you would think, just an old dried husk. There's no internal organs left on this thing. Everything is just, it just collapses in almost to, like, ash and dry skin, bits and pieces of felt, but nothing... Yeah, it just collapses okay. under your touch. Yeah, that's what I would think, but I didn't know how preserved it was. All right, you got a 19. Let me scroll down here and see what we got. All right. So, you can hear a bit of a strange clicking sound behind you, Sienna. Up ahead, you can see Kira check this wolf, and the whole thing just kind of inflates upon itself. Behind you, as you hear this click, you kind of lean over your shoulder to look. You see the ground right behind Meserick open up, and you see these huge, it looks like long, spider-like legs reach out behind them. They just... Looks like it's a uh, picture of trapdoor spider. That's basically what you're looking at. But you see this thick slime hanging off these two legs. Um, you were able to kind of shift yourself in time, Meserick, but it still gets a regular attack instead of advantage. So with that, I need initiative from everybody. Wow. Nice. All right. Holy crap. Do you want us to write it in or do you want us to um, say? 24. Right, right. Uh, if you want to just type it in, that'll be easier. That way I can write it right in. And let me roll I got 28. Thing. Oh, damn. Okay. Kira. Hey, quick health. Spider. I got 20. Uh, let's see. Sienna got a 20. Why do I roll good with my only plus two to initiative? And Mesrick, what you got? Oops. 
Alright, I've got ten. Gotta love that old man. <laughs> Alright. So Kira, you were up first. You'll see this thing in flight. You can hear the soft clicking sort of sound behind you as you look back and this thing come up out. It's about 60 feet behind you though, from where you're at at the dog and where Mezrik is behind you. And you are up first. So what do you do? All right. Well, uh, first, you know, I activate the fire on my one sword, and I move up uh, to where Mezrak and Sienna is. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Next up is this creature. So it's just gonna make its attack on you, Mezrak. I think it gets advantage because um, um, my vision, my hearing, everything was inside yeah. the bird looking down on the uh, all right. Well, it didn't matter either way because I got a 17 and a 19 plus 6. So 25. I don't have your AC right here, but I'm going to assume a 25 hits. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as you're looking out, you get that brief of you of this... Uh, large ship in the distance, and you feel that chill run up your spine, and you also get that same feeling that Sienna had earlier when she was looking at the small tent. And it's the same thing, just this extremely high-powered concentration of magic around this thing. And then you feel something wrap around you. It's wet, slimy sort of thing. It comes across your shoulder, one across your, sort of your abdomen, and then you just feel yourself get ripped back. Um, Let's see. Damage is low. <laughs> So only four points of damage, but I need a con save, DC 15. <clears throat> Natural 20, unmodified. All right, so no poison damage, but you can feel this other little wrapping, this uh, leg coming around you, and then you feel this thick, sticky, almost goopy stuff as your eyes sort of snap back to where you're at, and you can feel, see the others up ahead of you as they kind of disappear, and you can feel yourself getting dragged back, and then everything goes dark. You guys look back just in time to see this thing come out of the small trapdoor hatch in the ground. Grab Mezrak and just drag him back in. And it's just like a trapdoor spider. The sort of ground closes up. Um, it does its, It's going to basically disengage for its bonus action, and then it just drags you 30 feet down this tunnel, Mezrak. And you are considered grappled at the moment. And that puts the spiders done. So, Sienna, you are up. Uh... You can see where this thing went into the ground, but you don't see, like, unless you maybe dived in or something. It does. There's, like, no hinges or anything. It's, like, a natural trapdoor in the ground this thing made. If Sienna runs over there to lift up, um, is it, like, straight down, straight out, like, a little, little bit down, then out? Or it... um, by the way the thing came out, it looked like it was a fairly sharp angle, but not straight down or anything. Uh, well, if she, she, like, runs down and lifts up the lid, can she see down there? Uh, give me a strength check. Or athletics, actually. Uh, 13. Right on the money. Uh, yeah, kind of heave at this thing, lift it up. It's about a 70-degree angle downwards. You can see this thing disappearing into the darkness up ahead. Um, What's your race? Human. Okay, so you don't have dark vision or anything. So, yeah, it would just sort of be at the edge of your sight. Um, you can probably see Mezrik in its grips and this... The whole wall, everything is covered in this thick, green, sticky, gooey stuff. Almost like webbing, but much slimier. She's like, Mezrak, watch your beard! Fireball. <laughs> DC 14 deck save. Gotcha. Ooh, let me find my card. Um, actually, let's see. Save. 32 damage. Half on a save. What do I get for my bonus? Plus four. So it'll fail. So what was the damage? 30 what? 32. And I have spell scope, so the uh, Miserac does not take any damage. Gotcha. Yep. See your fireball race down this cavern. It lights up the sides. All the way down through, you can see these desiccated, deformed, dried husks of creatures sort of plastered to the walls around you. As this lights up, and you can see this fireball roaring towards you, Mesrick. Again, you can see... Mesrick just 
<laughs> looking at it to get closer and closer. closer. Closer, the heat radiating off this thing. But you can see all these previous victims. You see all sorts of different animals. You see a large four-armed gorilla and stuff. You see another winter wolf plastered to the side. All of them have been completely drained of any liquids and whatnot in them. And then just this blast of explosion goes off around you. You can hear this screeching sound from right behind you. Um, bits and pieces of the slime on this thing sort of drip off into this melting goo, steaming piles around you. Still has a hold of you at the moment, though, and you can tell it's basically just trying to drag you down the tunnel. Um, and that was 32. She, and she'll try to telepathically communicate to Meserac to, like, if he's got any way to teleport out, now's the time. And that puts Meserac up. Yeah, um, Meserac's totally held back to star and uh, misty steps um, of 30 as possible. Yep, totally. Um, that'll put you right at the lip of this uh, little hatch or whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. Climb out. Uh, as he does that, that is his bonus action. Mm -hmm. The next thing that he does, this is an hour away from the thing. <laughs> the next thing he does is um he um uh just basically spins round and backs up as he just folds his bow and readies an action. He folds his staff into an ice bow and readies an action. Just uh, everything that kind of moves and he's looking at the the where we just came up from. But he's just also just sort of trying to just like use people scan it. Nice. And that takes it back up to the top. So Kira, you are up. Um saying I'm assuming you're still kinda of holding this hatch open a little bit. You can see the yeah. thing down there, like I said, about 30, 30 feet. It looked like it was getting ready to drag back, being that you missed a step away. It'll lift up its head, and you can see it's actually a humanoid face, sort of on the large slimy spider body. It's sort of this white porcelain-looking face. It doesn't really have any uh, emotions or anything to it. And it stares in your direction for a few. Then you can see it just moves back. Um, I think probably the elf, Kira, you're the only one that can see it move back. But it looks like it's just scurrying back as far as it can, and then it disappears down a different tunnel. All right. So saying I'm, like, the only one to probably see it, I'll tell them, like, it's gone. It's uh, it's out the way. Mesmer, like feeling the, the the wound that he has on his bed, body, and he looks up towards Obsiana and says, "Hey, I groom on that beast of yours, huh?" I'm walking in here and you're alone. <laughs> she's, she's like, "What is it? Was it you being nabbed, old man?" Uh, he says, and he puts his hand inside his um the folds of his robes and he takes a, 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 a potion of healing and he like sips it down as um, the wound's like close. She claps you on the back like, why would anything want to eat you anyway? You're old and tough. Tastes like jerky a bit. <laughs> and then just to make sure uh, we don't have any more on from this thing, Sienna cast grease down into the tunnel. And then sets it on fire with press the digitation. Um, before you're able to quite do that, yep. you'd feel Alton kind of put a hand on your shoulder. He motions for you to stop, seeing that you might be casting the spell or something. This is Glabara Zoo. It's demon spiders of the jungle. Says, It'll be back. Its tunnels spread. It kind of waves around. This is hatches everywhere. Ambush predator. This is Many, many stories of the creature. This is best bet is to not to waste your spells and simply be careful where we walk. So you can tell the hatches. And you'll point to the ground and you'll see this right along sort of where you're holding this hatch open, Kira. It's sort of jaggedy looking like it's been chewed all the way around. Um, where you're holding it up is just different pieces of this thick, slimy webbing and stuff. At least it's... It's in, it's in the smell, if you smell. And you give the air. And you do notice that amongst all of this foliage and the flowers, and that fresh sort of air that's coming through on the outside of this, edge of this jungle, you definitely do smell this really strange, sugary, sweet sort of smell. It says, uh, if you smell it, 
and you see these chewed edges across the ground. It's it's hard to see, but uh, then you know it's a trap. It's, uh, our best bet is to simply hurry and keep watch. Hmm. I guess we'll throw Mazarek up onto the lizard and Sienna will walk beside it. And continue on our way. So, yeah. Oh, no, help down if you're walking to me. Uh, I'll keep an eye for the traps. So, so. And he'll point off to the side. He says, over yonder, there's one. And he'll point. You can sort of see where it is on the ground, kind of get an idea of what he's pointing at. He points out another one as you guys continue on a little bit further. Um, come to the edge, you know, right where this wolf was that Kira pointed at. Mesrick, you're probably able to see this thing finally, actually, by yourself, not through your owl upon it. Again, it looks like it's been completely desiccated, but you'll notice, Mesrick, it doesn't look in the same way as this creature and the things that you saw on the walls and stuff down in this. This one that doesn't seem like it was drained. There's no wounds on it. It wasn't drained of fluids by that sort of mean. Um, it actually looks like it's just completely dehydrated of any and all liquids. Again, Mesrick kneels down beside it and um, uses an investigation, just tries to find where the initial um, uh, suction was out. If there's any punches, or if it was even done for its nose or mouth. Or um, Look at this, and there's, there's absolutely nothing. Yeah. But you do see the ground around it, even, has been devoid. All the um, dirt, just completely desert-like. The, the foliage has just turned to dried, brown, crinkly leaves. A good 10, maybe 10 feet or so around this thing, as if just complete moisture was gone right there. Absolutely. Does it look like it came from a certain angle, like every, like the whatever's left of the grass is like in this direct in a direction? Uh, nope, not really. Okay. So anyway, he, rel he relays all this information to uh, as he's going through it in his head to um his other two companions. It doesn't say anything to um of course. And this is uh we should uh. We should move on, but I would much more prefer to take 10 minutes myself, but hey, yeah, it's, uh, it's better to move on, I guess. Alton will lead you in between some foliages, and he has you guys skirt around on the outside a little bit in some of these different areas as he points out small areas. You can every now and then feel like the strange rumble underneath the ground, and every time he'll sort of stop and just tell everybody to be still. Blabra Zoo. Just wait. It seems to help you along through this area. As you come to the final edge of the forest or the jungle, an outful hand, you can see the clearing of these hills. All of you would get your first look at the cobalt mountains rising up in front of you, really high into the sky. And you would see this, what looks to be a massive airship, pretty much just frozen to the side of the mountain. Send a at a bit of an angle, it doesn't look like it's the safest uh, situation, but it's just completely frozen in place, covered by ice, snow, what have you. Is it at an angle that looks like, um, if this is a mountain, if this is a mountain that is sort of like crushed into the mountain, or is it like, just like almost magnetized, like it could be... Um, no, it definitely looks like it sort of had more of a crash, because it's fairly steep on the mountainside where it hit, and it's... You can see part of the one side is at an angle on the side, sort of upwards like this. But the side that you can see face is definitely crashed into it. You can see bits and pieces of splintered wood here and there. The mashed area is broken. You know, those balloons popped and kind of hang over the side. Um, it definitely crashed there. Mm. Is there a clear way up the last thing I say? Is there, is there, a, um, there seems to be a clear way that we can make our way up to where that is? Um, Alton stops just sort of staring at this. This is... I, I, I don't want to go any closer. But you'll notice, as he kind of follows his eyes and where he's looking at stuff, it's definitely going to be a little bit of a difficult climb, but it's not impossible by any means, and it's a decent way up there, yeah. It's, you know, from where you're looking and where it starts to kind of go up the mountainside, it's probably a good half hour's walk through these small little rolling hills to where the mountainside starts up, and then... If you had to guess, maybe about three, four hundred yards up the mountainside. Well, let's get going. Nelson, 
We'll need your help. Trust me. I'm sure uh, uh, you'll, 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 uh, I'm a loss for words, he says, and he just turns and he starts making his way um, in the direction of the He'll ride along with, you know, the strider, um, pointing out the different ways. Seems to got you through most of the things. Says, uh, the Glaber Zoo will not, not, not follow us out here. And off to the distance, he'll kind of point to you, Sienna, and point off to the distance. And you can see a small little grove of trees here, a small grove of trees there, and around this large uh, foliage. It comes up probably about halfway on Strider. And if you're walking Mesrick, it's probably almost shoulder height of this waving grass here and there. He says, uh, you should have your friend right up here where this area is known for the silent runners. He, he doesn't want to walk in the grass. Sienna tells Mesrick, get up on the lizard. You don't have to ask, say that to me twice, he says. So it's to um, just make, make a smile. Move on through some of these gentle rolling hills. You can see Alton in front of you takes out a small little pack and starts chewing on what looks to be like a beef jerky or something. And he'll look around, all of a sudden this is bit of meat is up to his mouth. And then he just holds his hands out and he looks behind him and he eyes wide and he just kind of starts going like this. He says, um, everybody give me a perception check. Animals too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, it's going to be a uh, actually, let me tell you the DC. Then you can just tell me if you pass or fail. Uh, uh, Going to be 18. Just, just got me. Sienna herself fails. Rig fails. Uh, we had to get 18 perception, right? Yep. I was not sure I did it right. Strider fails with a three. <laughs> Your whole crew just fails. Turok gets a 19. Thanks. And did you pass that, Kira? Yeah, I got a 19. Okay. So, Kira, Mesrick, uh, Turok as well would notice just up ahead. The grass moves just slightly, not so much by the breeze, but a bit unnaturally. And it sort of parts a little bit here and there, and then folds back up, and parts a little bit. Um, you guys won't be. Um, does Turok have anything against surprises? Uh, I don't know if he has a, any sort of special ability or anything. If not, he's going to be surprised. Even with uh, making the perception test? Oh, he made it? Oh, yeah, he rolled he a 19 it. Sienna oh, fail. All right, because I'm, I'm figuring he's a little bit further ahead, so he'd be the target. So if he passed, then he would saw this, so he won't have advantage. Um, I don't know his AC, but I got a 13. 14. Okay. So you look up and you see Turok stop. Maybe his eyes sort of appear in the distance, and then you just hear the screech from this thing. You see what looks to be a centipedal-like creature. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a house centipede, but they're sort of grayish colored, these really long, nasty legs. But it quickly comes up out of this tall grass. You can see these massive mandibles come around and just grab a hold of this raptor, and you just see him disappear underneath. You can hear a screeching and screaming. He needs to make a uh, con save for me. And let me check if his damage... 16. All right, he's good on that. Uh, where's the damage? Oh. Twenty-eight damage he's going to take. Oh, damn. And you hear the screech. You'll see the spray of blood and all of these green, nice, soft grass just turned crimson. No, oh, he goes down. Um, off to the side, Mesrick, you can, just as the glance out of the corner, you see the grass off to the left of you sort of part a little bit in the same sort of way. Kira off to the right, you see one as well. He seems, 
these things are working more in like a pack sort of tactic, starting to surround all of you. Go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, Sian is pissed now. Get pissed, man. <laughs> I've got nine. Strider's at negative two. Right. 22. I mean, not Strider. Turok's at negative two. Secure is 22. I, I won't worry about the done side. I'll worry about yourself. <laughs> 17. 17 for Sienna. Uh, what did Meseret get? Um, I've got nine. Uh, Mesrick, gotcha. Let me roll these things. Ooh, that's not a good roll. All right. So up ahead, Sienna, you can see that crimson of Turak. This blood just sprayed through. You can hear it's dying, sort of screech for a second. This thing rears up, and you can see that it's yeah, a little bit bigger than the dinosaur itself, but it has that's back leg in round on its mandibles, and you can see this thing's just sawing through his back leg. And you see it start to drag it away a little bit. It is just going to grab Turok and drag it away 30 feet, and I need it to make another con save. And it's actually just going to take auto damage because it's down, you said? Yeah, you have that negative two. Oh, so he had just... I just yeah, let's give it death saves like a normal character. Then. So just give me a death save. All right. Uh, let's just roll a d20. I'm going to put him up above, actually. So I'll give him that before. 15. All right, so he'll pass that. But it's going to make its attack on him, so give him one death tick as well. And then we'll move on to Ooh. Kira. You are up. I'm up. Um, they're, all of them are about 20 feet around you. The one up directly ahead of you is moving away from you, though. The other two are coming in, flanking you on either side. Okay, so I'm going to use my... Uh... I can't, like, see any of them directly, right? Um, you can see where the like, grass is parting a little bit, but you can't see them, no. So if I make a ranged attack, it'll be a disadvantage? Yes, in this case, yep. Alright, I'm going to try it anyway, where it's case I'll set the grass on fire around it. I'm going <laughs> to use my uh, circle of blasting and cast scorching rig. Alright. Oh, is that an attack or a DC save? Attack. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a ranged attack. <laughs> Uh, what is the AC's? Uh, 13 on these things, not very high. Alright, so... First one is exactly 13. Okay. Second one is 15. And the third one is 20. Alright. Was it a straight 20? Uh, no, it was 20 with the bonus. Right. Hmm. Remember, the range spell text can crit. Yeah, no, it wasn't a crit. The first one I rolled had a crit with it, but of course it was a disadvantage, so I couldn't <laughs> use it. <laughs> Go figure. They are right, anyway, so. though. So. Let's see. Six. Plus another six. Plus five, what, 17. 17 points of damage all together. Yeah, you see bits and pieces of this grass catch on fire, these less than things. You don't hear anything or see this thing come up, but you do see a, one of these long, thin legs kind of go flying off in one direction. A bit of piece of flame will burn that. Another one goes off in another direction. But again, the path just kind of, so the grass just continues to part as it moves towards you, but you definitely hit it. Uh, da, 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 Meserick, you are up. <laughs> Meserick sweats. That's the first thing that he does. He um, he's on top of this um, Strider. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, on top of Strider, he just like um taps his um his stuff against the side of Strider's side, folds it into a bowl as his eyebrows like like ice up, 
and he shoots uh, uh, two arrows, um, two ice arrows doing Ray of Frost in the direction. Do I get, is it disadvantage? Um, at the moment on these guys, yeah, because they're concealed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can, uh, let's just see. AC is a 13. So. Yeah, it definitely hits. It's 19 to 21. It um, does four. It does um, 10 points as it just goes, disappears into the um, into this grass and if it and slows it by 10, 10 feet. Um, and that's still, is that the same one that Kira hit or the other one? No, so uh, it's, uh, one was coming um, towards me, I think, closest one that was uh, towards him. Yeah, they're both but even on either side. I think Kira hit the one on the right, so but they're both even distance coming in I'll, I'll go, either side. I'll go for the same one that Kira, Kira Okay. Did. So it's slowed 10 feet. All right, perfect. Anything else? The next thing he does is... No, he doesn't do anything. He stays completely still, and he says, stay still mentally to everybody else. Uh, so that one slowed. Gotcha. And Sienna, that means you are up. Mm. You'll see Alton in front of you literally just took like a frozen pose the way he was. Uh, fuck. Sienna is very angry and wants to rescue a raptor. I'm going to do a wisdom check to see what she does. Well, do your thing, man. Oh, that one. <laughs> she uses her amulet of uh, blasting to try to blast the one that nabbed Turok. All right. And I do not shoot at disadvantage because I have spell sniper, which ignores half and cover. Nice. Perfect. You'd probably be able to see where this one is anyway, because it's dragging Turok away. So either way, spells. Come back. Here we go. Let's see, so First shot. Seventeen. Nice. That's a hit. Twenty-five. It's a hit. Nine. That one is not. Damage. Twelve. Six. So 18. Again, you can see a few little limbs here and there flop off this thing fine in the distance, but it keeps getting ready to drag Turok away. Absolutely no sound or anything emanates from these things. And let's see. SR, let's see. That one is slowed. Um, you guys are only 20 feet, though, so you'll see the one that uh, you uh, hit Meserick. It does look a little bit slow, but the speed on these things is almost just beyond what you would even really see. It's just a blur as it spins through. And you can see this thing come up almost right underneath where your feet is, and it sort of jags a little bit. And as you look up to see where this thing's going, you just see what looks to be the silvery, long-legged centipede-like creature. And it's a blur as it moves through the air. And you watch Alton in front of you. Is he just gone moments later? As you look to the right, you can see that this thing disappears into the grass again. And all you can see is Alton's hands up above the grass as he's getting dragged away. It's like flailing like crazy. Do, 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 do. And the other one, uh, what is Strider's AC? Strider. Check. 12. And he failed, so. That's a nat 20. Um. Yeah, you can see this thing come up as you're watching it. Sienna, this is the one that Kira would have hit coming off onto the right. And it grass parts a little bit, and you see this disgusting, slimy, centipedal-like creature, these long legs. They're a good four feet in length, real thin, and it probably has at least 50 legs, if you had to guess. These huge mandibles almost rip out of the side of its mouth, and you see it comes down right across the neck area of Strider. Um... Uh, he's going to take 41 points of damage. 41? 41. Fuck. And I need a con save from him. No con save. That's okay. more than double his health. Oh, well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you see, again, just Yo, the... Kenny, you bastard. 
see this just spray of blood from Strider's neck as it just spills forth across the ground. Uh, everything around you just soaking in this crimson sort of glow. Do, 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 that takes it up to the top. So Turak is up before this other thing goes. You can see it in the distance, dragging him away, but he needs a death save. All right. 20. So it's Strider. Oh. Yeah, he, he, Strider just got insta-killed. So. Yeah, but I, I was on Strider. We were all on Strider. <laughs> But Strider's also like a large sized creature, so I don't think it like knocked him down, drug him off or anything, so still must be there. Yeah, it's just a big mound in the middle of the grass at the moment. I'm still on Strider. <laughs> I'm in the grass, Alright. What did Turak get for his save? I failed. Failed. So give him another tick and actually yeah, this thing's gonna auto attack him and it'll take him out as it drags him away. You bastards. And again, it moves. It has 60 feet speed, so you can just see this thing disappearing in the distance, dragging uh, Turak behind it. And then, you know, a few moments later, it just looks like it starts to disappear as it starts to get to the edge of your sight where you can see on these things. Um, that puts Kira up. You have one that would be the one that you attacked on your right that just attacked Strider, but it's still right there. It is not obscured, so it's got free hit to do that. And then the one that is slowed that got hit by... Uh, Mesrick that has Alton is moving away from you at about 30 feet away, but moving away with him. Okay, but I can still see Alton. Yep, yep. Alright, well, um, sorry my magical friends, but I'm going to cast Windwalk on myself and Alton, and there ain't no creatures alive, right? Like, both of the ones we was riding is dead. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to cast Windwalk on myself, all 10, and uh, Meserak. What that's going to do is that's going to turn us into gaseous forms for uh, a minute so we can, like, move away from here. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. So, is, is... go ahead, as all of you turn into this gaseous thing, start to drift away or remove however you do you definitely see another one of these things um, come up and it just starts severing off one of the legs of your beautiful mount sienna grabbing the large haunches on the back and drags that off into the foliage and the weeds you see turok in the distance disappearing and then whoosh, he's just gone in the foliage last thing you can hear is the screams of alton in the distance cut short if you look in that direction, you just see a fountain of blood spray through. I thought, the uh, didn't uh, care, uh, care, didn't you cast it on Alton? Yeah, I cast it on Alton myself, and Lan, I cast oh. it on up to three people. Oh, so which one of, did you not do, Mesrek or Sienna? I did Mesrek. Okay. So you didn't do Sienna? No, yeah, I didn't so. do Sienna. He used to have fly or levitate or something. Oh, together. okay, cool. Okay, my bad. Um. Let me give Alton a save to see if he's actually alive at that point. Yeah, he would be. Okay. Um, got it. He would do his best to be following you, then probably freaking out at the whole moment, but he's on his last leg. He's not even be able to see that at the moment. So, do, 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 Kiro. So that puts Mezarek up. Um, Mezarek spoke right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let's see. So I'm smoked. Um, uh, how much? What's my movement? What can I move? Uh, I'm not for sure. I ain't got all the specs. If he wants to look it up real quick, what's it called? Yes, he's form. Uh, I think it's yeah. Wind walk, ain't it? Yeah, it's called Wind Walk. Was the spell I cast? Let's see, Wind Walk. Um, attributes, mutation, thirty feet. Um. You have a flying speed of 300 feet, has resistance to damage and non-magical weapons. Only action you can take is dash, or revert back to its normal form. Yeah, which takes a minute, though. Uh, it says eight hours. That's for eight. You can revert back to your normal form, which takes one minute. It doesn't last the full eight hours if you don't want it to fall. Oh, uh, okay. So I, I stay in this form for one, one minute. Um, up to eight hours, but yeah, you can for oh, as long as you want. I'm in this form. This is, this yeah. is how I live now. I guess we're all just going to start flying off. <laughs> this, is this is life. Now. So what I do, what Mesrick does is um, 
he moves. I, I, I can move what a hundred and something. Uh, three hundred flying speed. Three hundred. He flies over to where um uh uh, uh Alton is. That, that that's all he does. And I can't do no spells and I think it's just movement is what I can do. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. Your cloud. Is, yep. Alton is Alton is gaseous form also. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. So I I fly over to where Sienna is. That's where yeah. that's what we do. Yep. You can see Alton assuming Kira is moving away or whatever, he's just trying to get away from that thing. Um so Sienna, you are up then. Seeing everything that's happened, she screams out in rage. And Sir Woods get the better of her, and she cast Fly. All right. SR3 is, let's see, that's the one that took Alton, so that's quite a ways away from you. So you can see the one that had Alton just kind of disappears back into the grass off the distance. Oh, I guess, you know, she flies, like, directly, like, 60 feet up in the air. Uh, what is, is it 60 feet as the movement? Uh, I got a flying speed of 60, so I can right. like, do a dash for 120. All right. Uh, is that what you're doing, or are you just moving up 60 feet out of the way? Yeah, uh, she, she's dashing the whole 120 feet. I was going to say, that's good, because these things have a spitting attack, but you're out of range. So you wow. can see this one getting ready to, it kind of rears up out of the ground. You can see this thick, green, mucus sort of stuff salivate around its mouth, and you can see this glob of what looks to be some sort of slime spit in your direction then. Sienna has a kind of you dash up into the air and it follows you up a good 60, 70 feet before it starts to fall back down. As you look down, this thing's just going to start sawing away at the edge or the haunches of your lizard. Um, intent to steal a chunk of that and go eat. Yeah, she, she Eldritch Blasts. It's, she just going to Eldritch Blast it <laughs> from the air. Let's see that one. Um, Try to scare it off. Um. Let's see if it's actually... Uh, yeah, it would have took that as a warning. Taking what little bit of meat it has and scurried off to disappear in the undergrowth then. Can, we, can we still communicate? Um, telepathy. Uh, so. I'd say so, yeah. Okay, Okay. so so let's see. So, uh, Meserix is... Um, uh, so, uh, everyone is fine except for... Uh, sorry, Sienna, for your... for your mounts. And uh, Alton, is he okay? Being that you can't see him, you probably would see this cloud that's often rather reddish and not healthy looking. <laughs> as unhealthy as a cloud could look, I guess. Uh, Mesrek then says to the other two um, uh, uh, telepathically, I say we head towards the... Uh, our destination while this form we still have. Yeah, Carrie agrees to be the safest way to travel now that we're already in it. I was yeah, saving it for a more desperate situation, but <coughs> I ain't seen it the way out of there. Silent, she kind of flies up to the cloud. He was this Alton, like, kind of like, just like, like follow me motion. Then she begins just dashing for the next 10 minutes towards the ship at 120 feet. The others have to, yeah, so you guys would make it there within the 10 minutes with no problem. Um, are you going right up to the ship, or are you stopping short of that, or it's up to you guys what you do from there? You can reach it without a problem. Yeah, but I'll say while we're in gas, this worm would probably be helpful if we, like, scout it a little bit before we go back into shape. Yeah, um, go at least ahead and perception checks if you want. Yeah, it might hang back out like a little bit since she's not a cloud. Uh, I got 17. Me too. Also 17. Nice. So those two of you maybe kind of skirt around this or something. The closer you get to this ship, the colder it gets. Almost sub-zero temperatures. It's absolutely freezing around this thing. Um... You get the sense as you maybe kind of go around the other side of it and up above it a little bit. You can definitely see that the whole thing crashed into the side of this mountain. The one whole side that is against the mountain is just nothing but timber and broken mass and bits and pieces of metal and everything. So it crashed into the side of this mountain. And if you look, you can see where it skid probably a good 200 yards or so across the face of this mountain before it came to a stop where it's at. You can oh. see that it's 
stuck there mostly by ice and a few crags here and there in bits of snow and stuff, but it looks almost like it crashed there and then just like flash froze in place. Does it look like there's um, been any sort of tracks leaving out? Like, if there's any sort of survivors actually came out of this place in any direction? Um, so what? So what? Mesret would do from if this is where the, the site is from bird's eye view, and this is the most frozen thing of it, then he would go from further out and periphery and look for any sort of tracks around this sort of direction. That makes any sense. Just 17. Okay, so you'll see actually probably a good uh, what is it? I think there's 12. Um, yeah, you're going to see 12 people that are dead frozen to the front of the ship in different places. Um, they all look they're all wounded a little bit. It looks like they were from a crash. Some of them look like they may have died from the crash having a broken neck. Stuff. Other ones look like they literally froze in place to death. Um you do see one single set of tracks leading away from this thing. It comes out of what looks to be a small hole towards the front of the ship and goes out across the snow a little bit. It's frozen in place, and you can see the small footsteps, humanoid sized, um, looks like boots or some sort, um, leading away through that and then kind of disappears once it hits the mountain area, so it's really hard to see the tracks from there. But you definitely see it in the snow and the ice area. You'll also notice, as you maybe kind of as you hover around a little bit and peer around you, about 100 yards to the west, there's several large tracks, large enough that in your human form you could probably lay down in. Indentated a good several inches into the earth, fairly fresh. Wow, well, all that information is um, telepathically relayed to everybody else. Can Sienna make a Sienna or maybe Mezzer make a check to see if they recognize like the footprints? Anyway, um, give me a survival check. Survival or nature, either one. Uh, yeah, that nature would work too. Uh, what's your nature, Meserek? My nature is um, uh, my nature is uh, plus five, but I'm not sure if I can do any um survival checking in this, or can I? Uh, yeah, you can look through your can mind. Try. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Then I'll... To use your mind. I definitely do that. I definitely do that. Because mine's three. You have a better nature. Okay, great. Sorry, my... Um, that was so good one. So, okay, 15, 16, 17, 17. Um, it's a boot print. Um, you're going to notice several larger um, animal prints look like dogs around there. Okay. Just, match that winter wolf. But the print itself wolf. is just a large footprint. with a large size of your body. Definitely yeah. giant. All right, uh, modifier. I rolled a 23 in my intelligence. Do I know what these are? Because, like, player, I know, but does Sienna know what a 23 intelligence? Uh, look around. You're going to notice one of these trees kind of caved over to the side a little bit. Even though you're in mist form, maybe hover around this. You can definitely see some Yeti pelts and stitched together and stuff. You're getting the sense of potentially frost giants. Frost giants, she says to them. I don't know much of uh, frost giants, but um, do they move in packs? Uh, how many? Uh, were there enough tracks for four, five, six, two of them? Uh, it's hard to say with the tracks that you see if it's one that's around a lot or yeah, maybe yeah. a couple. Kind of hard to say. If you had to guess, there's probably more than one. But. Mm, so you know what? Tell them she knows that frost giants, while not as sociable as some of the others, do form groups like all giants do. They are big, they're cruel, and they are hunters. And they tra use things like winter wolves as hunting hounds. Oh, does, um, what other things do they have the power to... Uh... To bring down a ship like this using the frost. Perhaps, I, I, I don't know. Is that, is that... They are creatures <laughs> innately frost or innately connected to the cold and magic. Maybe there was some kind of spellcaster amongst the group, but that would be exceedingly rare. Um, like, no. seeing it looking at the ship, like, did these things bust out of the ship? 
Um, it doesn't look like that, no. You do know that even though it is very rare, there are some frost giant uh, shaman type things, but they're called uh, frozen casters. Very, very rare, but they usually have powers of like a druid and a shaman, but with cold aspects to it. But again, exceedingly rare. Okay. Yeah. Akira, how close can you get to the ship? I will try now. And uh, yeah, Mesbeck starts to go to the ship. The officers want to freeze to death, even in the form that he is. Yeah. The closer and closer you get, you can definitely, even in the mist form, it doesn't affect you being that you're a mist, but you can feel the cold just sinking into your body, and it's extremely uncomfortable. You get the sense that if you're going to be um, walking here as your normal flesh and body, you'd need some sort of protection, or maybe have to be a quick in and out or something before this cold got to you. Absolutely. Does it seem that um, at the moment, Akira, myself, and, and Alton could actually go into the ship in this form, investigate and come out, even though it's like really um, discomfort uh, or it doesn't look like there's a certain point where it's like, uh... Yeah, you could probably for at least a couple of minutes. It couldn't be any sort of lengthy time, but being in the form you're in, it could be a quick in and out without any side effects. The longer you're there, the more and more. You can actually see parts of this mist that you are start turning into bits of snow and ice particles. And... So, Mesut would suggest um, literally going through the ship, you know, just like going through the ship. There's no time for investigation or any of that sort of stuff, but just like, <laughs> and even um, Mesut says, um, perhaps we can divide the ship up. I take the front, maybe uh, you, Akira, take the, 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 the back section of it. Well, what do you think? If you get any close, Sienna, you will immediately, since you're just flying the stuff, start feeling that cold. She stays, like, just out, like, set of the radius of, like, the danger cold. It's probably about a good, where the ship is, definitely, but about eh, 30 feet, 40 feet around it before it starts to warm up again. Also, fun fact, I did the math. With the fly spell, you can cover 12,000 feet in 10 minutes. <laughs> Damn. Me Meserick says, oh, that's good because we'll be using that in a minute <laughs> to track these um, giants, possibly. As long as you stay extremely high, myself, possibly, and Akira and Alton can uh, maybe go a little, a little ahead. We'll see. She will relay. She can cast one more fly, but if she finds these giants, we won't be able to engage them today. Yeah. Not with her expending her magic like she has. Engaging giants is not why we are here. And besides, if they have a shaman, I dare say they. I wouldn't like to think what would happen to us. All right, Kara would bring up that it was probably the false giant that kidnapped his sister, dude, sister. Ah, of course. He says, of course, of course. Akira, yes, of course. Yes. See, you know, we'll probably try to do that. She'll cast, like, once it runs out, she'll recast her fly and, like, as best she can, try to, you know, f follow the tracks and see where, at least where they go, like, cautiously. She's not, the moment, like, she notices, like, something, she's staying nice. Okay. Stay in contact. If it's okay, um, Morgan, um, as Sienna's doing that, I'm assuming that we could go inside the place just quick and then we could go faster than Sienna anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, things uh, I do. Yeah, you got eight hours, so I can always call you like the moment I see something. Absolutely. All right. Um, why don't we start with Kira and Mezrik first then? So as you kind of take off Sienna, maybe found some of these tracks and stuff and kind of flying above the foliage and the trees and the hills and stuff. Um, Mesrit Kiro, why don't you guys give me perception checks? Unless you're looking, are you looking for anything or are you just getting a quick bird's eye view of... Just bird's eye view. It's nothing in particular. If, if there was anything he's looking for, it's um, <clears throat> yeah, um, people because um, there's 12 bodies roughly we see. I'm assuming this ship is, um, can take much more than 12 people. So oh, yes. the giants have taken them away. 
Or so he's just trying to piece that together. Is it, has the giants taken people away? Are people still inside here? Just people. Really. Goes yeah. for um. Right. He's so cold that um the cold, even in this get this get kind of gaseous wind form or whatever, he gets to six. So it's just uh, it's hard to uh, you know. That's actually perfect. Here. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I got nineteen for perception. I'm sorry. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so yeah, Mezrik, as you kind of come in one side, uh, Kira, he go on the other. So he's sort of crossing paths. Maybe one of you scooping across the top and one's going down into the cargo area. So we'll say, Mezrik, on the front side of the ship, you can see where there's this large hole that's been blown up and where these foot tracks come out, leading down part of the way and then disappearing off in the rubble and stuff. He's going there in this form, and the cold hits you like a sledgehammer. You can immediately feel it, even in this weird form. Bits and pieces of this fog cloud that you are kind of drift away turn into bits of uh, snow and ice drifting around leaving this small little particle trail behind you it's pretty dark in here um there's enough light though that you can see um kind of cast by i'm gonna say probably eight more bodies all of them frozen some of them have been injured and again are dead from injuries some of them are have been flash frozen and they'll have bits looks of scream on their face or they might be in the middle of picking something up or doing things as you go through, most of the area down below is a cargo area. You pass through what looks to be just a simple cargo for food, stuffs, and barrels, and odds and ends. And then you go through some bunk areas that have bunks, several of them filled with bodies that have been frozen while they were sleeping here. Um, at the far end of this, though, you come to a room that's somewhat closed. You can easily slip through the cracks and part of the busted um, hall of this thing. And as you pass through, or pass through there, that's when this cold really hits you. And you can sort of start to black out a little bit. But as you pass through the other side, the last thing you remember seeing is it looked like a tapestry that was rolled up and sort of folded up almost like a flag would be. So a picture was on the front of it and it was all wrapped around almost like a pillow uh, inside of a glass case. Um, you remember it looked like the picture of a person or somebody that was holding something in their hands, you know, almost like in prayer or something. And then you just kind of bust through the other side of this uh, cargo area because the cold starts drenching you in. Um, Kira, as you pass along the top of this thing, you can see one area where the snow, the ice, and everything is very, very concentrated. Even as you pass through this, I'm actually going to have you make a con save, please. It's going to be a DC 18. Uh, 19. 19, perfect. You're only going to take half damage. 12. You're going to take 20 points of damage, cold damage, if you got anything for that. Oh. As you pass through, and it's immediately just seeps into your body. Unfortunately, your Kel, or your spell, is going to be dispelled at the moment. You feel everything around you just drop, and you hit the deck of this floor directly below your feet is what looks to be a young girl, maybe 9 or 10, frozen in ice, staring up at you with this ex extremely uh, terrified look on her face. And you'll see, when you look down, there's a small area about the size, um, maybe like one inch in diameter, that is scorched in black, almost like, uh, sort of like shaped like a ring or a coin or something, right on the top of that, and it's just completely scorched in black on top of this frost and this ice and then the cold just starts seeping in quicker and quicker um, you get the sense that whatever caused this was concentrated exactly where you're at what do you do uh yeah probably run out of there before i take more damage <laughs> um, I, ship, I, I think it's 120 you're in the middle of it so 60 so you'd have two rounds i need two con saves to run off there yeah. Okay. Do you even like dash in and jump in? And... Oh, you can dash. So just one then. Okay. Just one. Yep. DC eighteen. That uh, dice roll off. Cool. I got eighteen. Right on the money. So eight. Uh, 14 points more damage before you're able to get to the edge of this cold. Start, you know, bringing in some of this warmth and stuff. Um, yeah, you would see this spell as you come out the farther end, Meserich, and his spell kind of dissipate as he's in his normal form, as he's just hauling ass across the top of this deck to get out of the pool. Um, 
Sierra, or Sienna, we'll hop down to you as you scour amongst these trees, some of these rolling hills and stuff. You'll see if some of the steps, they just eventually disappear off into the distance. It's Your guys are about a mile away from the jungle here, but you can see these steps as you follow it along. They just disappear into the jungle. You can see trees that have been pushed over and stuff. Um, you get the sense that when it starts to spread out a little bit and gets close to the jungle, you see actually three separate, will look to be three separate footprints of these giants. And they disappear into the foliage or sort of kind of fading away in the rocky and the mountains and stuff like that. But you don't see giants themselves anywhere. <coughs> so, you know, we'll mentally command to Miserac that the spell only lasts for 10 minutes and she wants to make sure she can get back. <laughs> she doesn't want to get stranded by herself. Of course, of course. Mizrak says, does um, uh, also uh, Akira's spell has been dispelled. And uh, he relays, uh, Mizrak relays to both of you exactly what he saw um, when he came in to his place and as he, w what he went out. So you get a, like a, a, a mental picture of um, kind of what happened. Does anybody yeah, Akira, try to make a memory mind check about the what Akira is, or about what everybody saw? Oh, we'll say one more time, I'm sorry. What's that? I missed it. Uh, what, me or what Sanderson? said? Uh, both. both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say I would relate the message too once I got out of the area where it was concentrated at. What okay. I saw and about the little squirt spot and how it was like nothing but concentrated energy right there. So we'll see. You know, first suggest that I think perhaps before the day gets too long and we're all too exhausted, we need to find somewhere we can hold up for the uh for a while to rest. A little rock crevice, something small we can all squeeze into. Yes. And Sienna will like fly back. So as you kind of swoop around, head along the tree line there and start to move back towards them, give me a perception check, please. Perception. <laughs> to do my familiar as well, since he's probably uh, yeah, yeah. clinging onto my shoulder. Yeah. Oof. Perception. Who's my perception? I got a 14, and then Rig gets a... Seventeen. Right. So you hear Rig as he screeches beside you. Maybe with these feathery wings points down. As you skim around and start heading back up towards where this ship is frozen into the side, he'll point down. When you look down there, It's I'm assuming you're like 100 and plus feet in the air, whatever, but you look yeah. down, you see two winter wolves come moving out of, it's sort of like this um, canyon-y sort of area that drops down on the edge of the jungle, but you see the winter wolves come out, and then behind them you hear the thud, thud is a massive blue-skinned giant. He seems to be trimmed down of almost all the furs that he was wearing at the time. Now he's just in a simple loin, um, just covered in scars, these thick, meaty arms and legs. He has a massive uh, battle axe strapped to his shoulder. And then behind him, the thud of a second one. This one is about the same size, but actually has a second head over on one shoulder. And the two of them seem to be bickering back and forth with another. It reaches up and smacks the one, and they fight a little bit as they follow behind. And then a third behind them. This one is an old woman. Um, she hunches over a little bit, Less than the others, but she's still formidable looking nonetheless. As she carries on behind them, she has what looks to be the staff, but it's sort of curved up a little bit. You'll recognize it as a dragon bone. It looks like maybe a rib cage or something. The top of it is topped with some sort of large bluish colored orb. And they haven't noticed you above, but you'll see that they're slowly moving up as if they're headed towards where the ship is up on the mountainside. They don't look like they've noticed the others up there. They're too far away to really see them, being that they're smaller but they're definitely moving in that direction. 
Yeah, the best maybe 10 minutes walk away. Oh, CNO will immediately tell them, uh, the Giants are on their way back. There's three of them. Get to cover now. Get as far away from the ship and hide. Find a hole. Stick your head in it. And Sienna will, you know, do the same, like, flying back over towards the ship and, like, past it, if she can, <laughs> to, like, find somewhere to, like, hide. Yeah, me. I was just going to say, Mesra looks for, um, like, for instance, if the tracks were, this is a ship, and we had seen the tracks had gone in this direction, he wants, he wants to find a place that can actually look in that direction if it's possible. Maybe it's not. Uh, um, give me... Uh, you know, it's also probably telling the direction they're coming from. Like yeah. they'll be on, they'll be there soon. Yeah, um, yeah, I could say you could probably between all the crags and the you know bits of ice and stuff, you could find a place to kind of get a good good vantage. Okay. Um, I do need um, a stealth check from you, Sienna. They're not really paying attention, but being that you're zooming around above them and directly to where they're looking and headed, see if they notice you're something more than a large pterodactyl or something. Sixteen. All right. Yeah, if you keep an eye on them and stuff, you'll notice that they might glance around in the sky and stuff, but they don't seem to acknowledge you for what you are, if at all. Um, they just keep moving in that direction. Um, they talk back and forth to one another here and there. And this old old hag thingy that's moving behind me, you see she's actually not even walking. She seems to be sort of floating or drifting across the ground behind, keeping up with them without a problem. Um, you can get up to where they're at. You guys can hide away if you want or... What do you guys do? I mean, you yeah, can we'll say hi, hi, hi now, 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 now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Before, just before they come, maybe like two minutes before, three minutes before. So, um, um, Mesrick, um, it's just a, a jumble of thoughts going through his head. And um, he says, um, uh, about that uh, uh, that thing you saw, Akira, you said there was a black mark, maybe like a scorch mark. Um before your your spell had dissipated, that was on the floor by the girl. It's, um, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, uh, spell possibly um, Sienna could uh, create freeze this? Do you know of such spells that could freeze uh, a ship of this size? Arcana check. Mm, yeah. Or would that be a religion, considering the power? <laughs> That's yeah. Um, either one, whichever one you you want to do, either one would work. Sixteen Arcana. Um, spell wise, you know, it'd probably be beyond what you've even come across or could comprehend. Um, so yeah, definitely not something you would immediately recognize as a spell. If it was, it's definitely top tier mage type spell casting. But you get the sense that more. Um, it was con done by something more than it was an actual spell, like some sort of magical relic or something of that sort. And and, and, and even as Sienna's thinking about that, because she um, Mesrick says it to her, and she's like, she, she, he also says to Akira, he says, uh, Akira, can you remember the last exposition we were on? Uh, the holding of a cup by the leech, perhaps. He says, no, no, it was not you. As probably these things begin to um, come around the corner, he says, Sienna, these, uh, the cup in the last expedition was held by that leech. There was something I saw, and he actually quickly explains that as these things, I guess, come around. Yeah, it's like, she, she's like, like, everybody hide now. Get, far, get away from the ship. Get in the hole. <laughs> Everybody give me stealth checks, please. So like me and uh as they're acting like get far far away and like hide somewhere for a curious on foot. Yeah, I got a natural twenty on mine. I got a seven. Modified. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Mesur can modified. Yeah, you guys can, or Mesrek and Sandy, you guys can get away a good chunk um, and hide potentially between these crags and stuff. Mesrek, you're still that mist as well, so kind of blend in with the fog and the haze that's up here a little bit. Even though you're 
find that you're not very stealthy or quiet. You, you can blend in fairly well. Um, Kira, you're able to get away, maybe between a couple small crags and stuff. You're hidden down, hunkered quite low, maybe laying close to the ground or whatever. You're only going to make it mm, probably maybe 100, 150 yards at most away from the ship itself, but you're in a good, solid hiding spot. From where you're at, you can see these two winter wolves seem to be more on the prowl of guarding this area, why the giants start looking it over. Um, they prowl around the outside. They pass by you a couple times, stop, sniff the air a little bit, but move on, not quite catching your scent. Um, maybe you're downwind a little bit. As you watch, and all of you get a little bit of a vantage point and watch, you can see these giants. One sort of gets at one end of the ship, one gets at the other, and they just sort of stand there looking around, almost as if guarding this area, watching or anything. The winter wolves constantly just circle back and forth on parole. But this old hag moves across, and you see her body start to shrink a little bit. It shrinks down a little bit. It shrinks down till she's about the same size as your average human, maybe nine feet or so at most, but she, she shrinks down a fair amount, and then she ducks down and enters well, the area where you entered, Mesrick, that large blown-out area on the front side. She starts walking through. She disappears in there for a while. A couple minutes pass, and then you'll see her come back out. She's holding um, that thing that you saw that was in that little glass cage. Like It looks like almost a tapestry pillow type thing. And she'll sort of put it into this pack. And is your comprehend languages still running? Oops, you're muted. That's right. But I do speak giant. Okay. Um, give me a perception check to see how well you can hear from where you're at. Absolutely, I think. Um, it's too far away. Well, uh, too far. He gets like a um, five. Five. You got a five, you said? Yeah, four, actually. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, you're not able to really pick out anything, though. Only thing you can picture or make out is not here. Um, other ones are sort of jumbled up a little bit. Um, and you didn't quite catch it, and it's just too far away to really catch what it is. But you definitely heard her say something about not here. Mesmeric immediately says uh, um, tel telepathically to Akira and to uh, Sienna, I say we speak with them. It uh, could be fatal. But um, do we have other options? Not messing with the giants that took down an airship. But did they? Did they take down the airship? He looks at the, the most likely culprits at this point. He looks at the woman, the 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 female, and um, with her staff of this orb. Thing, um, is she still floating, or is she like human size sort of thing? There? Um. Depending on how long you wait, she would slowly start getting bigger and bigger. She stepped out of this thing and started moving towards the giants. Um, In this form, can we talk or not really? Could you talk to her? Yeah, I mean, um, can I verbally talk? I can. Mm. Probably, I don't really have a mouth, so. <laughs> yeah, not really, no. <laughs> how, how far away are we? Um, the here it'd be about 150 yards at most. You guys would have been able to get, you know, a good three, 400 yards away. Oh, man. It's out of range for the familiar to speak through. Yeah, she'll slowly get bigger and bigger as she steps out of this thing. And over by this large uh, two-headed um, frozen giant thing. And you can see they're speaking back and forth. And then she just lets out this loud curse, um, very vulgar, swears like a sailor sort of thing. And she slams her staff into the ground. And you see all this ice and snow and everything around the ship just erupt out of the ground. And the whole thing shakes. Then you see the ship itself just completely blows apart in different pieces. Uh, rains down around these giants. And bits and pieces are clocking off the top of them and stuff. And they look, this old hag seems to, you know, find it rather entertaining. But these two other giants look pissed off. And they just slowly start drifting down this mountainside again. And they all just stand almost bewildered. 
Like how much of the ship was blown up? Uh, probably a good quarter of the front end of it. Uh, actually, if you want to give me an Arcana check, you might recognize what she did there. All right. 21, uh, 21 yeah. Um, yeah. You can see it was actually a spell that she cast, but it looks like some sort of uh, ice storm or something of that sort. But instead of raining down, it basically erupted out of the ground and just blew the front end of the ship off. You can hear her old cackling sort of laughter. She starts to drift down. Where's your right? Begins to drift down after him. And he, so he comes out of hiding, basically. He still stays in his form, but he just like, begins to just drift. Um, Desperately yelling at you, what are you doing? Or like, mentally, what yeah. are you doing? If I knew, do you think I'd be doing it? Get your yeah. ass back here, old man. Oh, this is this... not our business. We need How to close do you want to get? Um, he, he gets to um, 100 feet. He gets to 50 feet. Okay, you can hear her mumbling. Um, speaking giant, um, but she sounds like she's doing calculations of some sort. She's talking, kind of, my, you know, trying to figure out in her head or something, uh, calculations of where they're at and how far they've traveled and trying to get an idea of where they're at exactly. She doesn't seem like she fully understands where she is yeah. in the world. But as you get within that 50 feet, she'll just completely stop. And her head will lift up and she'll look around. You can see she has three eyes, an extra eye on the left side. And she looks around in the distance, real pale. And she looks directly at where this fog is, where you're at, and just stares at you for a moment. She'll stop and lean in, sort of. What do you want, mage? He's not down me. for trickery. Does Mezrak relay any of this? Of oh, everything, everything. He, he dispels this um this wind gases form and uh, leaning against his staff. Wait, you said? Oh no, sorry. Uh, or you said extra eye on the left side, right? Yep. See it? Just kind of like. Slack jaw. That's her. The 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 halfling that went missing. Oh, interesting. She okay. got a hold of something. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. He says, "Um, uh, he says my name is Mesmerik." In in giant, and he says, "Um, I I, I seek." Uh, a lost girl, Makakati. And what shits do I give of this? She'll sort of look. You can see the two giants that are ahead haven't noticed yet that she stopped, and they're just continuing down the mountain. She says, "I could crush you." This, this I know. This I know. But it seems that. It is not only I that seek something, perhaps you seek something also, perhaps I can help. You can't help what I seek. What do you know of this ship? Rumors have reached all the way to the Anzaru of such a... <coughs> strange ship. I've come here to investigate it. And along, along the way, I've heard of a missing girl. Rumors, you say, have reached all the way to where? The Inzaru, have you not heard of the city? We will have to pay it a visit, won't we? Says, I think we'll be meeting again, Mezarek. With that, she'll turn, just completely ignoring you, turning your back to her, and slowly starting down. And she'll stop. If you wish to follow, you will be dead. I suggest you and your friends scurry out of here. I understand. This is enjoying and just uh, inclines his head. Cool. 
she'll just continue to drift. You can see that she's probably good 10, 12 feet off the ground as she drifts down behind these other two. Um, as she comes up a little bit, you'll see the larger two-headed one. One of its heads turns around, and it does stop, and it looks at you for a moment. You can see it reaches into the sack behind it, pulls out this massive boulder. But this old hag holds up her hand for a second, shakes her head. You can see almost this pouting look. He was not good to have his fun. She motions him to continue on. Uh, is there is it possible for me to do like an investigation check? I mean, as he, I mean, in his mind, he is done here. You know, he turns as he's making his way back up um, to the rest, but to do an investigation check with um, what he's seen of this this giant and the description of this little girl. Is there any sort of correlation like what, um, what's his name, like uh, what Sien Sienna was um, saying? Um, give me the investigation check. If I can use guidance, I will. If I can't, I can't. There's, um, there's a natural 19. I would say 19. Without guidance, 28. What was that again? Uh, 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 without guidance, I got a 28. Oh, geez. Okay, that's plenty then. Yeah, you're good. Um, you mentioned that... Excuse me. You remember that uh, he mentioned his daughter there that went missing, had reddish hair, and then that third eye. Okay. When you looked at this thing, you can see the normal bright blue or white hair that these frost giants have. Hers seemed to be a bit more... have that reddish tint to it, almost pinkish. It was real scraggly um, and mostly bald, but you definitely what little bits were there. And maybe she had a couple of warts on her chin. They were a bit pinkish as well. Um, and that third eye on the left side of her face, real pale, covered up. So you do get the sense. It, it, it relates in that correlates, yes. There's nothing to say that it's the same exact thing or person, but it has the same features. Yeah, absolutely. So he relates that to uh, Akira and, um, and Sienna. And says there's so many uh, as he's uh, getting closer to where um, they were. He says there's so many possibilities. It could be, it could be her age. It could be her mother. It could be his. Uh... Uh, I think the the halfling got a hold of something. Perhaps whatever it was that caused the ship to ice over, and it. Uh, Turned her into the giant. There was the, the her tent had localized ice magic on that same exact little spot, nowhere else. Okay, what do we do now? Is the question. We can uh, the mercy that this uh, giant has given us he will not be the spice. I can assure you. We find a hole to rest in, so I can recoup my spells. And then we leave. <laughs> we go back to the village, tell him we found his daughter. She's a giant now. And we get the hell out of here. As that was out of here, sort of rolls off your tongue. You can hear this howling in the distance. Looking down this mountainside, you see two winter wolves full barrel run off the edge of this jungle up in your direction. And a third a fourth, and finally a fifth. Full pack running, howling. You can see they're definitely communicating, and then they just sort of split a little bit. We're going home, man. <laughs> Part, uh, Ian. Yeah. Or Sienna. Same one was home. Uh, who are they going after? Um, they're down the mountainside, so they're probably, I mean, full-born run, but a couple, two, three minutes away from you. We can see them start... Bouncing up along the mountainside and heading all in your direction. Spells. <laughs> I'm trying to set to do with this in, in, in um, the academy, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, so here is still hiding wherever I was. I'm going to drink a uh, greater healing potion. Mesrek mm -hmm. uh, um, does. Uh, Doesn't Mesrek still have one? Flying potion because he never did give it yeah, to um, Sienna. Listen, 
I'm leaving that till the light. You know when we're all dead and we're like that. I'm leaving it to that moment. That's gonna come. Trust me. He does levitation. He does. A, he he says Colasia and just levitates up twenty, and then every round he's gonna try and do twenty, 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 twenty. Like that's the distance it is. Right. Um, we'll say three rounds before they actually get to you, so you'd be able to get about sixty feet. Um, what does Sienna and Kira do? They're gonna get to you. So you'd be able to get about sixty feet. Um, what does Sienna and Kira do? Um, I, I don't know. Don't know how how much longer do I have on my fly spell? Or oh, more I on that ten minutes. Um, give me. Uh, let's just make it a luck roll. Give me a one d twenty roll. One d twenty. All right. All right. D twenty. Fifteen. I'm going to say the whole thing took you maybe eight, nine minutes. So, yeah, you probably got about two minutes left, I'll say, on your fly spell. All right, she will. Let's see here. It probably wouldn't be enough to get you all the – well, yeah, that's actually really fast. You'd probably be able to get down to the mountainside and out of the way two, of them. Two them. minutes. How far can I go in two minutes? Let me actually calculate this. Let's see here. Right, clear all that. 60 seconds and a minute times two that divided by six and I can do entire What's that Wait, hold on, wrong number. Sixty times two. What's that? Divided by six. Twenty times. 20. I can get two thousand four hundred feet. That's like a nearly a mile. So, yeah, you'd be able to get down the outside and part way across the little. She will fly over to where. Uh, you know, find uh, Mesorak, like, since he's, like, levitating, she'll grab his hand. Oh, wait, we're, uh, I assume, uh, crap. the halfling, he's still, like, in cloud form following us around. Actually, you look around and you do not see this cloud anywhere. And also, our telepathic bond starts to fade. If it actually is gone already, actually. But, um, it just fades out our telephone uh, I assume I care, uh, what I've like let us know before then like like where he's like what hole he's dug in all right Sienna flies over so as she can she grabs Mezarek like by the arm to pull him along <laughs> she flies to where Akira is tight on him so he's floating grabs him and she flies away <laughs> with the two of the whole, pulling the two of them Right. You can see these wolves basically just bouncing up this mountainside in your direction. They'll watch as you drag him behind you and fly overhead. Um, are you just getting basically the hell out of there for the moment? Well, yeah, consider uh, if they're levitating, they don't have extreme control over it or like, no, I can't. So I'm just like, yeah, pulling them a as you're pulling me along, Ms. Rick says, I wonder if she, she changed her mind or something else. That was probably her warning, or her form of the warning to get out, was unleashing the dogs. Yeah, you kind of get that sense, and even as you're speeding along, they can't keep up with you for your speed, but they're definitely trailing behind and sort of um, hurting you out of there. Yeah. Fly well, probably as far as she can. You'd be able to outdist them in a pretty good chunk. Maybe find, like, a giant tree or something that's got a big enough, like, top we can land in. Mm -hmm. She's like, <sighs> panting from all the magic exhaustion and <laughs> flying, and then she gets to work putting up a tiny hut at the top of this tree. <laughs> Can you do the entry? If it's got enough room for me to set down, like a little flat area. Yeah, some of those. As long as it's big enough for the three of us, I can make a bubble. Okay. Like find some like big like baobab or jungle forest tree or something like that. Oh, Ms. Rick says as he uh, 
clicks his fingers and just uh, opens another portal for his um to dispel his his owl that was kind of flying around i guess before he says um what what is our plan now sienna is like my plan is to finish this little bubble to make it up um uh, not see through and then in the morning i am flying us back to the halfling village letting them know what happened and then we're going home. Uh, you, you realize we've left the nephew. Of I couldn't find him anywhere. We left I... with Alton and we returned without Alton. I don't like it either, but I couldn't find him. I'm just saying, how are we going to explain this to the village? We tell them what we saw, that they need to move from this little hunting camp. Akira, what do you think? Uh, well, Kira never likes the idea of running. And, uh, yeah, of course, coming back without Alton would probably be bad mojo. <laughs> and, uh, like, emphasize to Akira about, like, the not running. She, like, plucks up Barry or something, and then she just smashes it. It's like, you, Barry, smash. <laughs> Who's Barry? Yeah, <laughs> but but Akira still got a bead of Planner Alley. Yes. So I what we I was take down a giant between the three of us. That witch, though, that magic, that magic from that staff is very similar to what was ever causing the ice. Dang. I don't know if I could counter it. <sighs> <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> two wizards oh. and a pirate. <laughs> no match for two giants plus whatever she was. Hey, I could climb up his back mate and ride him around like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, well, what I was thinking is Bubble maybe I can now. use this <laughs> oh, what I yeah, what I was thinking is uh, maybe I can use this uh, <clears throat> planner Ollie and maybe find us a deity to help with uh, maybe some kind of cold resistance or yeah. something to help with uh, stream cold. In, in the past, it's good, but in the past, I've uh, I've created things that have uh, given me resistance to cold. But you still feel the cold. You can still die from the cold. Even though you have resistance. But I'm not saying we completely forget about these giants. There is they, something here very important we need to deal with. But I think we need to come back more prepared for dealing with three, two frost giants and a ice, some kind of ice hag. Our objective was to investigate, see if there were survivors. From what I see, there are none. So if we, we completed our mission. We need to... um, you do get the sense that there was one survivor because you see the trails <laughs> leading out of it. Yes. That went on the other direction. Yeah. Um, remembering that. Um, as far as like, if you're looking at the map of the setting, the island or whatever, um, for where Chris put the blue dot for where the ship is, it would actually be the, the tracks that led out of the um, ship and stuff would have headed south, so further south on the map. And which way did the old woman go with the... Um, they just headed back into the jungle, sort of, and east. It is. It is south. So, but you're looking at uh, about 12 days since the ship crashed and where it is now. To now, so, you know, I mean, you know, where it would have went from there. Whatever. But you, the, tra the initial tracks went south. There's one survivor. Who, from the size of those footprints, underwent the same thing that may have happened to that girl. I think the survivor went one way, and uh, the giants basically came to search for 
things. I think the two are not uh, connected. Maybe, but I just can't get over the similarities between the the, the witch uh, and yeah. the missing girl. No, but you're right. You're right. But that is uh, that is another thing. On top. The girl yes. and, and the, the giant there one for sure. This for sure. Because there's uh, something wrong with those giants. They don't. Well, for one thing, they don't normally have two heads like that one did, or extra eyeballs. I think giants this, don't like deformities. I think the staff that this woman, that this uh, female giant has, is the cause of bringing down the ship. <clears throat> More than likely, I say we go. We go back to the tavern. We post up. The biggest, the strongest blades we can get, <laughs> and deal with the giants then. Because the three of us right now can't. Akira, what do you think? Uh, Kira's willing to do what you guys think is best, but running's never been good for a fighter. <laughs> Diana, you're cool. I think if we go, uh, <clears throat> coming back with uh, Bjorn or Davi, it will still not be a match for them. I can assure you. Plus, they might not be there. Oh, they'll be there. I'm sure. They want something. There's something from that ship they're looking for. Otherwise, they would have just left. Perhaps they or could. maybe they traveled from somewhere else to get there. They're not quite sure where to go next. Mesrek gave him a good idea to go. Whatever you told him about the city. Yeah, yeah go uh, to town. You find all your answers there. <laughs> the town full of adventurers and city guards. And I don't know. I can't remember. It's just been so while. Are the Flame of Fist even still there? Or they did they all get run out of town? Now they got brought down and the leader is on the run. <laughs> well, if, 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 if the city cannot deal with them, we definitely cannot deal with them. <laughs> Giants are... No, I didn't say the power. city wouldn't. I just said it'd be fun to watch two of them run through the town. We could deal like, with the two regular the, Giants. That those aren't that they aren't the hard part. It's the witch. It's the only thing that worries me. And the witch possibly is the girl. Right. Well, see, she does cold. We summon up a fire element and sick them on her. <laughs> Makes us still carry a fire versus cold. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. My gut says yep, we need to make it out while we're still alive. Yeah. It seems that we are faced with this question many times. Our life in balance with what is right, perhaps. Or our life in balance with uh yeah. So to the to the to the village I guess first, but I don't think that will end well. No. Uh, no, it's not. Maybe the maybe the halfling beat us there. Maybe he got scared and ran back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if anything, we at least owe them the truth to what has happened. This is, that is so we don't know. <laughs> That's all we know. We turn we turn him the gas to help him, and he disappeared. <laughs> so, Whatever, um, let's do it. Okay. All right, so I guess we let like rest for the eight hours so I can get my spells back in the tree <laughs> and the tiny bubble. Yep. And then I will Let's see here. There's three of us, right? Yeah. Okay, I will cast 
fly at fourth level. So I can cast on two of us. And then I will cast it, or cast a level three fly on, like, I'll cast a level four on Mezarak and Akira so they can fly, and then I'll cast a level three fly on myself. How long does it last? Uh, ten minutes, but we can make 12,000 feet in those ten minutes. Yeah, you'd be able to make it to the village and no problem with that. Okay. All right. So yeah, go ahead and give yourself a full rest and all that entails. Uh, you cast your fly. Use you scurry across this uh, top of these trees. You notice different places here and there. It sort of clearings open up, and you'll see some of these other um, small little halfling villages. I've kind of scattered out in this whole little area down through here. You're quickly able to get to your destination where this. Um, small little pack was that you met initially as you come down and lower yourselves down to the ground and get a little bit closer you can see the area is completely trampled 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 just trees falling here or there um large footprints have pretty much covered the area but you'll see patches of ice and snow every few feet here and there scattered about you'll notice several dead halflings Five of them, in fact. Perrin being one of them. Um, you see a couple of the younger kids that you got the little toys from, Mesrick, wow. off to the side. But it looks like, yeah, they definitely passed through here. And you'll also notice another set of smaller footprints, larger than the halflings, but normal human-sized as well. Um, and as you... Actually, everybody give me a perception check. See who notices. There's... Wait one second. 20. 10. I got 16. Okay, so, Mizrak, you notice it over by um, one of these small tents. You can see the area is maybe just from the recent rain or something. It's kind of muddy a little bit, but you can see the impression of what looks to be just a normal sized human, about the same size as yourself, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and pressed down into the mud like he got slammed there. You can see where he pulled himself back up in quick running steps away out of the area. Um, Mr. goes over, uh, over to where this is placed. His first thing is checking if the size is anything the size of Alton, just in case, and then ch checks for tracks in the direction of um, where, where um, it was going. Um, it would be bigger than Elton. It would be more like yourself, probably. Or, I'd say about six foot two, six foot three. Looks like a decent sized person. Um, and the tracks would be headed sort of northeastish. East. But they disappear between once it gets into some of the rockier areas and stuff. You kind of lose track of where it is. Definitely would need more of a tracker or something to really follow it. Yeah. But otherwise, you don't come across anybody living through here. It's definitely been destroyed. You don't see Alton. <laughs> this is bad, man. How, how long does it take us? Because um, I'm assuming that these the big tracks somewhere are going in the direction of the city in a way. How long does it take us to... Um, actually, no, they are not. It looks like they came through here and stuff. As you start to follow, they start to head... Uh, to the west again, back towards the mountainish area. Excellent. The question is, uh, do we try and deal with these these giants? Akira. Uh, well, Akira tells you he not he got his new toys. He's been trying to try out, but it's. Up to the main majority, yeah. I feel like they're they're definitely a threat. Sienna, what do you think? Sienna's just kind of staring, like the ground of all the carnage and everything. Mesrick bends down, picking up uh, a few more of these like uh, reddish, um, like. Uh, bone and marble objects that match the ones that she has in in her uh, uh, in her pouch given, and then she <clears throat> she hands it over slowly to Sienna and says, uh, "What do you think?" Uh, 
Uh, let me... Two things. Let me roll. See. <laughs> I can't decide, so let the, the dice decide for me. How we decide then, man? There's, there's, there's two already. There's... Err! Mr. X says, uh, Akira has toys he wishes to, uh, to, to experiment with, and I have a conscience to clean. He says, the last time I went against my conscience, you and I were under the geese of a lich, bartering with a few souls for many. This is foolishness. It's better perhaps to die than to uh, to live in this way. But perhaps we could become lucky. Perhaps there is a chance. Look, uh, time is two hours. Oh yeah, what time is it? It's eight o'clock. I think you got like what forty minutes or so, probably. Yeah. Yeah, Mesrek. Mesrek. Uh, 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 after handing these, uh, uh, reaching out these these objects to you, like closes his hand and just again with his staff and he starts heading in the direction of these um these very large prints with the ice patches and stuff. He clicks his fingers and put a small um, portal, but it's not that what I want to say. But opens as his, um, his owl appears and just flies up above. He still uses his own eyes and his staff as he starts making his way. He says, well, are you coming or what? Yeah. Here, heads off behind you. Fine, God. Damn it, you old bastard. <laughs> you beat the death of me. <laughs> Kira reaches out, puts his hand on Mezrak's shoulder, and tells him that I don't believe in happenstance. Everything happens for a reason. There's a reason we met the Lich Clean and made a deal, and there's a reason we're here now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to roll up carrots. <laughs> or right. Santa just had to burn one of her her level four slot for the fly spell. So, a uh, part of a uh, ice giant, do we need to start making potions and belts? <laughs> <laughs> you guys will walk through this thick foliage for a good half hour, forty five minutes. An hour passes by. You can feel. The temperature seems to begin to drop a little bit. It's still warm and humid, but it definitely get a bit of more of a cooler breeze. And it gets a little bit chillier and chillier. And then all of you reach sort of this area that looks down. It's not really a canyon, but it's a steep slide down to the base below. Water trickles down around you. And down below, you can hear the mumblings of these giants, the bickering of the two-headed thing arguing with itself about which direction to go. It's hard to see them amongst all of the large trees and foliage. They're big creatures. You can kind of hear them. You can kind of pick out where they are in the distance. Maybe like 100 yards or so ahead. Um, they are completely oblivious to you, obviously, at the moment. Um, but slowly, like they're moving away towards you, instead of still headed west towards the mountain range. Super. As we're kneeling there with the, and grateful for the distance, and the and the uh, the cover, um, uh, Mesrek looks at Sienna as Sienna begins to cast, and he also just uh, begins to cast. He casts Mage Armor, and then he casts Mirror Image, <clears throat> and then he casts Fire Shield. Um, Sienna, like mentioned to. You, you still have that polymorph, right? Yes, right. So while they're doing that, I'm going to try to uh, see if I can stuff my way up closer to them. Alright, uh, go ahead and give me self-check. Oh, hold on, right off the table. 
All right. Uh, 15, 19. Oh, actually, let me look and see what. Oh, Start moving ahead, Kira. You see the mages behind you cast these spells to get prepared. Slide down this little indentation to the bottom and start moving forward. And you can smell it first, but this thick, wet dog sort of smell. Then you can hear the growls of these creatures as you look up and see a winter wolf off to your left, about 15 feet, squaring off against another winter wolf, the two of them. It's hard to tell if they're playing or if they're actually fighting with each other, but they kind of circle each other a little bit, growling. You can hear another growl off to your right as you turn your head to look, staring back at you just a few feet away is this snarling mouth. Everybody give me initiative. Um, uh, um. What's supposed to happen that way? <laughs> <laughs> Their scent is awfully good. They're also sentient, by the way. They are fully self-aware and intelligent creatures. Right. You don't trick them like you would a par like an animal. All right. Let's see. Twenty. Twenty-nine. No, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Luckily, you only see three wolves, not five at the moment. Oh, crap. Oh, is there five there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> I got an eighteen. All right, uh, let's see. Kira, what do you got for initiative? 28. Kira, Mesrick. And. And. Derek Sienna. 18. 18. All right. So you guys, uh, Sienna, Mesrick, you guys are up on the little bit of a hillside. So it's uh, be about 90 feet down to where the plateau is, which is where Kira is at the moment. Um, to your left, Kira. About 15 feet away are the two wolves. They have not noticed you yet. They're going to be kind of fighting with another each other or something. The one to your right is only five feet away, though. That one, you do have a snarling face in your face. Um, and the giants are up ahead by about uh, 120 feet or so. They are oblivious to you as well. But you can see the hag is up ahead and the two giant, larger giants behind her, but they're slowly moving through. Um, but you are up first, Kira. All right, so it's not gonna work. I pull uh, my swords out and uh, bonus action. I'm gonna tell my sword to fire on. Oh, let me look up the AC on these things. I forget. It's a uh, scrimmator. Oh, never mind. I was thinking something else. <laughs> Let's see, Winter Wolf AC is 13 on these guys. Okay, so uh, I was going to attack one of the giants, so I wasn't paying attention. So if I attack him, I get a sneak sneak attack, right? Yeah. All right. Um, they're too far away from melee, though. They're about 100 yard, or feet ahead of you. Oh, they're 100 feet? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll just regular attack the okay. wolf then. But they haven't noticed you yet, though, either, so... All right, so first attack, six, nine, 19. Good. Yep. Second attack, 15 plus two, 17. Both hit? Yep, both hit. All right, eight plus... Twelve. Twelve plus nine is twenty-one. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, eight, twenty-nine. Thirty points of damage. 
Gotcha. Nice. Your blades lay into this thing. You can see it backs up a little bit. It's a bit of a screeching in pain as your blades tear into its flesh. Um, let's see. The giants do not notice you yet. Well, they're going to in a minute, but because that thing's howling. But they're up, so they go. So Sienna, you are up first before they can do anything. She will. Eldritch blast the wolf that he has just attacked. All right. First shot. 24. Critical. And the next. Okay. First first shot's damage. 10. Second one. 14. Do the math. Got it. Anything else? Um, that'll be all she can do for right now. All right. Then Wolf One is up, which is the one that you've just been laying into. It steps back um, just like a little bit from where you're at, Kira. You can see its lips curl back a little bit, and it lets out this ear-piercing howl. And you feel this cold breath start to form around it. Uh, let's see. Did you do? I need a dexterity saving throw, please, from Kira. Seventeen plus four would be twenty-one. All right, so you're only gonna take. Uh, let's see, half damage is gonna be seven and seven is fourteen. Seven points of damage. You're gonna take off cold damage, and that's all that one's gonna do. Let's see, Wolf Two. You see the other two wolves as this blast goes off. Their eyes quickly turn in your direction. Bright blue piercing. And they're just going to flat out attack you. They have pack tactics, which gives them advantage. I got a 21 on that one. And 19, 24 on that one. Let's see what's their damage. Do those both hit or just one? Or? I only got 16 AC, so. 14, 22 points of damage you're going to take as both of these charge in. You can feel the bite of one come down on your shoulder, and then another one onto the back, sort of in your back of your thigh. They don't grapple or do anything. So that is it for those. Up ahead is this thing that lets out this howl and this blast of cold breath. You'll see this two-headed giant turn slowly, and its eyes come looking back over its shoulder in your direction. And then the other one stops, too and they both turn up ahead. They can see the hag as well. Takes a few steps, and she sort of turns as well. Um, giant one is up. So you see the two-headed one reach back, grabbing a hold of this huge axe on its shoulder, and just come thudding forward. It's just going to move towards you, but it will be able to come within 10 feet of you with its movement. Meserek, you are up. Right, takes out <clears throat> these uh, small marbles and, 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 and bones and stuff and just like throws it in the air and says, Karalia! And um, does animate objects and just uh, shoots them down towards the wolf, the wolf that is injured. Because, um, so, uh, it's 18 plus. That's eight, that's eight, so it's 18, it's 19, it's That's nine plus eight is the... Seventeen. It's 13 arm class. Yep, 13. Okay, four hits. That's the natural one that misses. It's one second point, two, three, four, that misses. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two. It's it's okay, great. It does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and four. You can get out those extra dice. Oh, I wish I could calculate faster. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, 24. Uh, what is um eight um eight? Yeah, eight fours are eight times four. Yep. Thirty-two. Yeah. Twenty-four and thirty-two is where it is. So fifty-six. These things just like fall, go in the air and just go down and just like a scalpel, just like it goes through the one that's um the wolf that first is uh, injured. You see him, first one goes through and just see spurts of blood on the back side of this thing as these things tear through it. You will take that one out. And he moves, um, because we were, we were traveling like like that, he moves like 30 that way. Okay. Because it's in left. Gotcha. Right beside you, Kira, you can just see this needles and small bones and shit coming through the side of this one as it just tears it apart, leaving this meaty, bloody, wet wolf hag body in front of you. Um, anything else, Mesrick? No, that that's it. All right. Uh, so, so just to be just to be clear, what you had cast before, you had cast uh, just uh, you had cast mirror, mage armor, you had cast mirror image, and there's like a. Uh, 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 fire that is sort of like coming on, on his um, fire shield or something. Yes. All right. <coughs> you see this old hag woman up above. She sort of turns. She's eyes sort of scan across to where you're at. And she'll see her, this one cold, dead eye, settle on you for a second, Mesrick, and sends a bit of a chill down your spine, but you see her mouth sort of grin up a little bit. She smiles a little. She'll start moving forward. Her hand comes out quickly, and you can see these big icicles start forming off the tips of her fingertips. And then her eyes settle on uh, Kira, where you're at, and she just throws her hands forward. Bits and pieces of ice fly in your direction. It's just going to be a magic missile, basically. Fifteen points of damage, Kira. Oh damn! Fifteen. Yep. That was a good magic missile. Hag is done. So Kira, you are up. Um, the one closest wolf to you is dead, but you still got two more that are on you. Um, a giant is ten feet away. The other one is starting to move, but he looks like he's going past you and up the mountainside there. All right. So uh, what I want to do is like uh. I have a ring of jumping. I can cast jump spell at will. So I want to like uh, draw both my swords and like jump and like come down on top of this ice giant. Okay. All right. First one's crit. Second one is nineteen to hit. Oh, what is their AC? Uh, yes, that'll hit. Okay. Damage for the crit first. Let's see. Plus eight's twelve. Eighteen. Twenty four. Plus another eight. Uh, Thirty two. Forty-one altogether. Nice. With nine points of fire damage. Okay. So forty-one. Nice. So yeah, he jump up on this thing. You can feel both blades sink down. Like, hard. What is it? Like on his back or shoulder? Or... I'll let you describe. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine as I'm like jumping down. As I'm coming down, I'm like aiming for his neck. I imagine, like, the crit hits right on Mark, and the second one just, like, lays into the side of his shoulder. Nice. And he hurries <laughs> nice and deep to the hilt. You can see the, the <coughs> thick, almost purplish-blue blood is seeping from the food. It lets out this bit of a roar. Um, anything else? Uh, yeah, as a 
extra action or whatever, I want to, uh, like, dash disengage. Uh, whatever shelter I can get to with them range. Um, thinking, because you're basically, like, 20 feet up in the air on his neck. Are you going to try to climb down, uh, or...? Uh, was well, there like any trees like above me I can jump onto? Okay, yeah, you can do that. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah, I'll try to jump as high as I can, last on anything I can. Yep, perfect. <laughs> uh, give me a let me say acrobatics check or jump, uh, or I mean athletics, either one works for me to see how good you can get up or how high or out of the way, anyway. Sixteen plus four is twenty. Okay. Yeah. So maybe a couple of these other larger trees beside. Just get up in one of these and pull yourself up. It's just out of reach of where he's at. So as you see his hand kind of come up to grab you. Yeah. Let's see. Giant two is up. This is the one that's starting to come around. You'll see it kind of heading uh, Sienna and Mesrick, your guys' direction, coming up the cliffside there. And it'll reach down into its pack and pulls out this boulder. It looks crossed. Trying to eye you both and brings its hand back. It's gonna go after you, Sienna. The person all the way in the back. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is their attack? Oh, damn. Oh, excuse me. Twenty-five to hit. Twenty-five. I can't even shield that if I get hit. <coughs> All right. Mm, boulders are not good. Nine, nineteen, twenty-eight, 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 and with that, it's just going to take another move action towards you, grabbing another boulder out of its bag. And Sienna, you are up. Ah, shit. Fuck, what do I do? Um, I'm going to uh, cast Grease on the giant that just threw the rock at me. Nice. All right. Oh, you'll have to remind me what that does because I don't have my book right here. Um, DC 14 deck save or it falls prone. And it completely botched that with a three, so yeah, it will fall prone. She will misty step 30 feet away. <laughs> gotcha. So that one's prone. All right. Like 30 feet back. <laughs> Perfect. Um, what's their range on that? Oh, damn. Yeah, 240 foot range on those things. Holy crap. Uh, well, let's see. See, that's done. Wolf two and three. Uh, how far does that's only 50 for going? Um, you'll see these pack of wolves in the distance, they start to sort of separate a little bit, but they're running up the hill towards you, Mesrick. They won't be able to reach you, but you can see that they're coming around basically to flank you. And giant one. This one below you, as you look down, Kira looks back up at you as this larger two-headed one. You can see the two look at each other, look up at you, look at each other. Reaches down, pulls out this boulder. Ah, darn. Uh, 13. I'm yeah, assuming. this is... This is, yep. So you just feel limbs and parts of this tree crash apart as it hurls a boulder up at you. They fall down around you a little bit. See this thing growls and reaches down, and then stops. Instead, reaching back, grabs a hold of its bra or a battle axe and brings it forward. Uh, Meserick, you are up. Absolutely. You see some <clears throat> the one coming closer to him from this side as the other one goes around to him. Um, flank him, and he takes those objects that he uh, that he had, and as a bonus action, he attacks him with that. This one. Uh, eight, eight. 
6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 
So I'll just roll a 14. Or if I roll a 14 or higher. Uh, yep. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 1d20. Uh, oh, thank God. 18. Nice. Her eyes quickly Fuck. over to where you're at. Xenia, and you can see this third eye sort of lowers a little bit. Give me a will save, please. Will save? All right. Uh, so that'd be wisdom save? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm stuck in Shadow of the Demon Lord. 19. Nice. You get this sort of nauseous uh, feeling, and you can feel your heart thump a little bit, and a little bit of panic rises in your chest for just a brief moment. You're able to push it out of the way. You get some sort of uh, fear, sort of dread kind of hangs over you. Kira, you are up. All right. One giant is up, one giant is down. Spell lady. All right, so I'll put my uh, swords up, and I'll grab my javelin on my bag. Uh, how far is the hag away from me? She hasn't really moved forward, so she'd be about 90 feet. About 90 feet, so she's still within range. Uh, let me see, I'll move. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh... I'm at an elevated position, but is there anybody between my line of sight and her, or is it, or can I just see her directly? Uh, no, there's nothing in the way. You got a pretty clear shot. Okay. Uh, so I aim my javelin, I toss it in the air, and I yell, Kai, and you just see like this five foot long beam spread out, and a straight line beams from me to her. I got yes, fucking crit. Yeah, good. critical. Uh, four die six. Fucking eight die six, right? Tell me I'm not bugging. Okay. I mean, eight die six with a crit, right? If it's four die six, uh, yeah. So just yep. Okay. I know I got two, four, six, seven. I only got seven dice. Let's see. Ten. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Thirty-five points of damage. Okay. All right. Too bad it wasn't all sixes. <laughs> Got it. Anything else? Uh, yeah, as a bonus action, I don't think I can drink the potion, but I should be able to get one ready, right? Yeah, you can get one out. Yeah, I just grabbed my last uh, Raider Killing. Alrighty. Get that ready. Let's see, Giant number two, which is prone. Let's see, he's going to take his movement action to stand up. He already had a boulder ready. Um, so you moved back, right, Sienna? Yeah. yeah. Um, his eyes are going to swing around, seeing his compatriot trying to whack it to Kira in the tree. He pulls his arm back. He's going to lob this one in your direction, Kira. Oh, 14 plus 9, 23. Uh, yeah, that hits. Give me a acrobatics or athletics check to not fall out of this tree when this boulder smashes. Okay. I got 19. Okay, that'll be good on that. 22 plus 3, 25 points of damage you're going to take from the boulder. Um, you're going to definitely fall a little bit out of this tree and stuff down. Not all the way. You're not going to take any damage or something, but it throws you back a little bit of this huge-ass boulder. 
And he's just going to hear the move, so he can't do anything else. Sienna, you are up. Oh, uh, he has to make his check again if he didn't leave oh, the Greece. Greece. Nope, he didn't leave it. Yeah, Ooh. well, isn't it? That's a net 20 on that one, though. Oh, damn. He's good. But he's we already used his move to stand up, so he's not moving out of the area. So, uh, um, I'm going to use my amulet of blasting on the giant that just stood up. Okay. Two shots uh, are going to be into I it. One of it's going to be into the grease. All right. Uh, it's this one. All right. I guess first shot and twenty-four. Mm, yeah, that's a hit. Let me see three C's. 20 for the second shot. Um, yep, that's a hit. And then shooting at the ground. That's an auto. That's fine. All right, the two damages. Nine. Twelve. Okay. And then you just lighten the area on fire. Yep. Gotcha. It's standing in fire. Yep. Alrighty. I got that. Anything else? That's about all I can do. Let's see. Well, two and three. They're coming in on you, Meserick. Um, the one's pretty much dead, but it's still got a couple left. So um, you'll have to remind me how the mirror image works, but. Yeah, right. So mirror image. Uh, there's three other images of me, so four in total, including myself. Uh, if, if you roll a six or higher, um, you hit image number three, I believe. Roll a six or higher, and then roll over eight, and then roll over. So actually, I think first, if you roll under the number, then you have a, a possibility of hitting me, I think. But I'm... I'm, I'm and then the arm class is 12. If you hit them, of course, 12 when it goes out. Oh, let's see, do I have to roll? Okay. Been a while since I used this spell. Let's see. I, I... Roll the 1d20 to my target. Okay, target instead. Let's see. Well, three duplicates, six or higher to attack the target. Two duplicates. Oh, so you have to roll. So you're going to be rolling if you roll a six or higher to change it to an attack's target duplicate. So okay. I, see if, I see if I hit you first. So do, 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 do. that one, I rolled a one and a four. So that one is totally not. The other one is going to have a 21 as the high. Wicked solid. Yeah, so with that one, I need to roll. Uh, I'll tell you what I've got in a minute. I've got 14. Uh, with one duplicate, let's see, with three, six or higher. So it's going to attack one of the duplicates. Yep. And then it needs to arm. Um, oh, yeah, so it already hits it because it got. Yep. Yeah. It's already been a hit, and let's see if it hits it. I think is it just destroyed? Um, yeah. Yeah. Across so you're down to two duplicates then. Yeah, I have a question for you, though. Do, um, does it work out as two hits then or one? Because the armor class for the. What's it called? For the image is armor class 12. If a duplicate AC equals 10 plus your 12, if an attack hits a duplicate, the duplicate is... Oh, so on if the other one... Well, the other one wouldn't hit anyway because it was a 3 and a 4, or a 1 and a 4 or something. So on, you only had one hit that hit you. Got it. Even It wasn't even a hit the other duplicate, so... Yeah. So that's the two wolves. So you just down one duplicate. It's a giant one. You're going to see him rear back with this huge axe, Kira, and just bring it down, wham, into the side of this tree... Um, I'm going to make him a strength check. So I'm going to need a dex save from you with an AC of 21. Okay. Whew. I got 23. All right. Um, I see you only take half damage from the fall, which is going to be 1d6, which is 4. So you hit the ground kind of hard. Not as hard as it could have been. You see this thing stare down at you. It gets ready to bring its axe up again. I believe he can. The second attack. Frost Giants get two attacks. Yep. So yep, the other one's on you. Do, 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 do. And it's going to be 7 plus 9, 16. 
Oh, still me? Yep. You said 16? Yeah, my 16. AC 16. Alright. Well, that's what he got. 21 more points of damage. You'll just see this overhead wham into the ground as it buries its blade into you. And do, 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 do. that's it for the giant. Meserek, you are up. Absolute Meserek. Um, oh my gosh, how do I do this? Let's see. Meserek. Can I divide my these things that I'm these objects I'm going for? Has oh maybe not. not. It doesn't matter. The thing is, um, I know one's got like if I just hit it a couple times. Oh, cool. um, I'll say yeah. You can probably just kind of whip them around, and I'll take two points off that one and hit the other one. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not gonna waste heavy waste all that for two hit points. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. It's a miss. Uh, thirteen. Yep. Missouri. Yeah. Let me just start doing this properly. Like, this is like that is a miss. Okay, let's see this okay. Eight plus eight is sixteen. That's a hit. So natural twenty. That's that. Natural one. Natural one. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is a hit. Okay, great. So um there's one, two, three, four, five, six hits. One is a twenty, so how does that do how do I do with a twenty? Um or does it not go like that? Yeah, just double it. Just double it. So I I go let's say it's a a three, this is six. Probably easier. Plus four is ten, so ten just puts it aside. And then this is um one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that is a two, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, twelve plus five. Twelve plus five. Um. Uh, five fours, so five fours are 20, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first number I just said? Was it, it could have been 12. Was it 12? Uh, first one was 10. Okay, let's say 10. So 10 plus uh, 20 is 30. Okay, great. So um, the third damage, as this thing goes into the new one, but I need to get an attack on this two, on this one as yeah. well too. i just do two and then I'll just transfer all sorts of almost kind of like this little tornado around you. I'll wipe yeah. out this one, just completely tearing it. Only had a couple hit points left. It just sort of whirls around you and tears through this other one. So, it's minus two. Got it. And then he does a uh, free action to put his hand inside his um, take out a potion. If that's possible? Yeah. And he drinks it. Okay. And then I have a movement, and he does um, move 60, fly 60 up in the air. 60 feet up in the air, gotcha. Uh, and and then, he's, then he's finished. All righty. Uh, maybe um, I'll have an opportunity, because this one was on me. It was in the vicinity of me. Um, I'm, oh. I'm not going to say in this case, not really, because with your spell tearing through a part of it and stuff, it kind of, nah, you're fine. Okay. It's fine. Uh, do, 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 do. Hags up. So, uh, Sienna, I need a wisdom save from you one more time before this Sorry. lady turns her sexy eye away from you. Sixteen. Uh, right on the money. You're good. Again, you just have that dread of fear for a moment, but it passes. And with that, she puts out her hand, and you see this uh, sort of bluish-colored glow to it. And you see something appear. She kind of holds it up in the air, and she turns it over. You see this blue liquid just roll down her body, and she goes invisible. And... 
With that, um, yeah, one, two, three. Okay, so all of you feel the twenties. This ground again start to shake a little bit. Um, I believe it's a dexterity. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. It'll be everybody in the area. Um, do, 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 DC 16, please. If she's making a hostile action, it would break her invisibility. Mm, not with greater invisibility. Oh. oh. I got oh. 20. 16. 16. Um, I was flying up in the air, do I still do? Yes, you do, actually. I do. Uh, what, what was it? Dex. Dex save. Yes. 16 is the DC. Just okay. made it. 17. 17. So we're all going to take half damage. Up above, as if you fly up, Mesrick, you get a little bit above some of the tree lines and stuff. You can see the sky open up above you. It's mm. this bluish, cold sort of sparkling thing. You need to see rains of icicles and snow and chunks of ice fall down. Um, it's going to be bludgeoning damage, cold. Uh, you guys are all going to take half damage. Let me roll up the total and you can just split it. Eight, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So everybody's going to take 10 cold bludgeoning damage. Sienna's out cold. Or she's out. Is, is it possible to get, because um, I have um, fire shield. Or is it possible to get, because um, I would have resistance to, to cold? So you're going to take half again, so five. Okay. Sienna's unconscious. Yeah, so I was curious. With that, you can hear the thumping steps of this old hag. It sounds like it's starting to fade away kind of quickly. Um, Kira, give me a death save if you're down. All right, now how do I do this? I ain't actually had to do one yet. Uh, just a 1d20, 10 or below is 15 a 15 or higher. We're using meat grinder rules. Oh, okay, so I don't know what he had for this game, so whatever he had for this game. It's 15 so, or higher. 15 or higher, all right. And I got 16. So that'll be one tick on your save. Uh, let's see, the fire giant is in the grease still. He's getting fire, so he's just going to take damage. I rolled max damage on the flameage though. <laughs> uh, uh, got it. And he's gonna start. What is the grease um radius? Ten you know? feet. Okay, so yay. And he's gonna make a deck save and try to move out of that shit. And he's gonna roll a three and completely fall prone again in the fire. Did you say Anna, you are up? <laughs> Better save my ass. <laughs> All right, Sienna, you're up. I'm unconscious. Oh. Give me that death save then. And let's see, Wolf 2 is dead. Wolf 3, this one's on you, Mesric. Roll that d20. 15. I'm, I'm in the air, 60 feet up. Oh, yeah, you're good. Yeah, my bad. So, yeah, the wolf is... All right, I roll a 20. And that right. 20. Ooh, that okay, so, gives you two. Yep. No, I get back uh, I get back up one. With one hit point. I bet. Da, 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 da. So, wolf three can't do anything. It's just going to cry because you left him. So. Um, get out of here. There's no way on earth we're making this. <laughs> that huge giant... Do I still get to do anything on my turn? Oh, no? yes. I'm sorry. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. All right, um, I'm casting fly on myself. Fly, and there's nothing around you, so yeah. And I'm dashing. Up, up out of the air. You can reunite with Mezrek up in the air. Shakira's still down there, isn't he? Yes. Which is giant one is up. He looks down at where you're at, uh, Kira. Just on the edge of consciousness. But you're starting to go under. You see this huge hand coming down. Grab a hold of you. Off into the distance, Mesrek Sienna, you can hear this cackling laughter, both inside your heads. This is your last chance. With that, you guys will see Kira's body get hurled through the air. Take one more tick on your death safe, Kira, and it just this giant reaches down and whew, up into the air. 
can I, I got... levitate, cast levitate on him? Uh, yes, you could. Uh, does that require him to have concentration? I don't know. I would. It's con. No, wait. It's con. Who concentrates? For, for a fly spell, yeah. though. The only reason mine isn't because I've got a potion, but if you do a fly spell. Uh, well, sorry. I don't know. Do you, do you... Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know. As a caster, do I have the concentration, or would it be on the person who's. Has I'm the spell? not sure. I wouldn't think he would be able to concentrate if it's on him because he's unconscious. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if it says concentration for the spell, that's you. Because you're concentrating. Uh, well, then I can't cast levitation on him. Do, do, do. Yeah, that would be him. You? Or you. You can't visit and cast yeah. levitation. That is definitely possible. Well, yeah. My turn, I guess. Yeah, so Kira, you're just going to have a death save as you feel your body get hurled up. You guys yeah. see him rise up and start to come back down. Giant 2 yeah, is I on the fire. So, I wrote an 18, by the way. Okay. Oh, on your death save. So you would probably wake yeah. up in consciousness or... Oh, no, it's just a... Is he doing it with... Okay, okay. So, yeah, you see yourself up. Just on the edge of consciousness, you can feel that lightness in your body. feels like you're on a roller coaster or something. Um, let's see. Giant 2 is in the fire. I got that already. Sienna, you would be up. Uh, where is... like? He hurled it at you guys, so you just see his body flying towards you. Can I catch Kira and then book it? He's being hurled with force. I'd say yes, but you're probably going to take damage by getting bludgeoned by his flailing body. Oh, well, he's um, he's if he's levitating, he he no longer has like the same momentum he did. Oh, you did cast levitate on him. Uh, did. Mesrick was gonna, I think, right? Oh, Mesrick. Yeah. Uh, uh, so when it's my turn. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, because it's not his turn yet. Yep. Well, I can't catch him yet, so I, I'm at one AP. So Santa just starts moving. <laughs> All right, so you're moving away. Wolf 3 doesn't matter. The giant down below through, so you can just start seeing these giants stomp off. Follow them. So that'll put Meserick up. Absolutely. Yeah, Meserick sees me. Uh, if he's, is he still flying through the air? Um, yep, he'd be flying towards you. Kind of. He's a giant. Down. Absolutely. As he starts dipping down. Meserick is... Uh, yeah. And, yeah, levitates him. And then flies over to him. Takes, takes his body. And just like just flies at uh, as fast as he can, knowing that um, that 12, uh, 12,000 feet we got. I was gonna say, um, somebody's gonna need a medicine check or something on Kira so he doesn't keep going under. Yes, I have a question for you. So, there's two things that um, he, he actually asks or wants to know. I've got good berries which I haven't used. I've got okay. um, a greater healing potion, natural healing potion. Can Any, anything break? that would heal would automatically bring him yep. one and he, awaken he does, him. He does um, first. He does uh, good berries. Eating uh, <laughs> as you chomp his mouth, yeah, yeah. down his gullet. Eating seven himself, <laughs> 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 one to you, and uh, I get, uh, just trying to like down into him just to revive him first. Okay. Yeah, you'd be able to put him back up at like one HP, and as soon as he does that, I give him okay. with my um, uh, uh, both of them get a great a healing. I take no, yeah, both of them get a, both of you guys get two greater healings, great healing potion, great healing potion, great healing potion, great healing potion. I can chug one and still fly, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, what do they do? That's the four die four plus four. Yeah. Or she drinks okay. one. All right, and then Sienna just continues flying. Like, her plan is fly maximum tall tree that say, and then bubble again. And rest. <laughs> nice. It's not, um, it's not the giants we have to worry about now. They've pardoned us. It's the rest of the jungle. And Sienna will just kind of very briskly say well, we can make we can make quite a distance okay. Let's, we'll get back to new zero <laughs> frost giants beat ass yeah, I don't know. Oh, what a hurt on them their boulders uh, are nasty how far can we actually make it in a day i can cast 
I know Chris didn't give me the actual days and how long it took to get down to the area, but I was figuring the hexes, I'm thinking about seven. I don't know what that would be mileage or anything, though. Well, I'm at, oh, crap. No. Flying, you're basically going almost quadruple, so I probably could make it back to your base in two days at the most, I would think. Yeah, because I can cast... Um, I can get the three of us fly... Uh, does <laughs> does I have fly or no? No, I, I've, I haven't got my... Down, no one's... Oh yeah, that's right. So, I can do it once. I can do it once per short rest. But however many times you could do it, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? we, can make, uh, well, we can make twelve thousand. Uh, how about you give me a one d four roll? Told you, man. Told you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, well, we got the giant speed down. We can get them. <laughs> yeah, we can be giants. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was working at it, so I got knocked out with three twice. Three. <laughs> so, yeah, it takes a little under three days between stopping and going and your short rests and everything. But even being that you're flying and you're hauling ass, you ain't going to encounter anything that's really going to mess we up or mess you around. Sienna, I want 700 gold pieces. You owe me, man. Sienna slaps you. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. So, you guys enter your little home base. What did, what's the name of it? I forget. Me and Zaru. Yes. Oh. You get there, lick your wounds, look a little rough, and start spreading the word of what you come across. Potential giant just, attack. Say so, you guys don't hate me. The giants were required by Chris, so hey. No, it's. <laughs> Morgan, you rock, man. No yeah, yeah. There's, there's no. You know, when you got 10th level characters, or whatever, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, we've done this, we've done this. Let's do and then Morgan's just like, listen, this is the real deal. <laughs> man, I'm telling you. That was, and you know what's. Fucked up. Here, let me end this live stream. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody.